Well, hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's new primetime gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. And as you can see, I have brought some friends along with a very special guest. But I want to thank everybody for taking the time to hang out with us tonight. This is going to be a very opinionated show. Um, obviously, the topics that I've already been, you know, advertising is going to be there's going to be some, you know, some heavy talk uh, regarding some of the controversy that's going on with Horizon Forbidden West and the actress that played uh, Aloy. Uh, you know, obviously, there's been some talk about, you know, her face being a little fuller. Uh, we were talking in the green room prior on how ridiculous that is, but we're going to get into that. Of course, we're going to talk about what the game actually looked like, the 14 minute demo. Then we're going to get into some of the unreal engine 5 demo the running on the xbox series x uh, of course we have chris grinnell former sony developer as well as someone that has uh, also seen time on rdx and several other podcasts and he is with us today chris first of all brother thank you so much for hanging out with us we know that in the uk right now folks if you didn't know it is 1 a.m and chris still found the time to hang out with us i cannot thank you enough brother welcome to the show no it's awesome um thank you for having me obviously we've been uh having a chat over the past couple of weeks about um getting getting on the show and doing something together so no really appreciate being on here and obviously looking forward to uh chatting through the topics with you guys well, it's great to have you, brother, and I cannot wait to get your expertise, uh, you know, behind the scenes knowledge of development uh, in just the community itself, not just so so much for Sony on that part. But, you know, obviously, you know, this is a small channel. We don't get a lot of developers and you being here is a big treat for us. So thank you once again. Let's get to uh, someone that has made himself even more popular besides being the loudest man in canada he is now officially a hot tub chick middle-aged gamer guy what's going on brother <laughs> well good evening boom chat our special guest chris and of course to the rest of the panel guys have a great uh, have a great evening we haven't even started yet <laughs> Anyways, yes, I am the hot tub girl now. I'll be doing my uh, hot tub Twitch streaming, of course, as everybody saw on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I actually reached out to Twitch um, um, and I asked them, I'm like, is this appropriate? And uh, didn't get a response from them. So, you know, they don't seem to be good sports. But anyways, guys, in all seriousness, <laughs> we have some great topics tonight. Let's get right into this show. Well, thanks for being here, brother. Definitely great to have you back. Obviously, you missed last week. Uh, you were out doing some Secret Squirrel stuff. We'll we'll find out uh, hopefully later on in the show what you were doing. But thanks for being here, brother. Cyber Knox, you took the time off from crime fighting in Gotham to be here. You're on here. You're here on time. And, of course, no injuries to any of the Gotham PD. Welcome to the show. As I appreciate that boom. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't miss tonight's show. We got an astounding guest here with us tonight with Chris. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, we got, you know, our brothers from PTG here. And of course, I already subbed to my get the hot tub, you know, Harley <laughs> Quinn. You know what I mean? Amazing. So I can't wait for us to get, you know, uh, talking to, uh, about tonight's topics. And it's going to be a great show. Glad to be here. Well, thank you very much. And next up, not only is he a sniper elite, not only will he shoot you in the face, but he will also build a model for you and put, you know, politely put it on your grave site. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> son, what's going on, brother? How the heck uh, are you? And how has the model building for Gundam been? When are you going to be launching the video so we can sit back in awe and watch how you can put together a 2000 piece kit? <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Actually, I was trying my hardest to get the video done before tonight's show so I could just say, hey, go watch it. But uh, I, I didn't make it. It was way too much work. But um, no, so hopefully tomorrow, the next day, it'll be up. So it is coming nice. really, really, really soon. Yeah, so I'm excited. And uh, no, it's uh, happy to be here uh, on a couple of the topics. I might be the only guy on the panel with certain uh opinions are probably gonna be different than others but uh, i'll keep it nice we and love cordial, that. but it'll be a little different than probably most so i uh, can't wait to get into it well listen you know what the, the whole point of this show it's a talk show uh, everyone's opinion is valid everyone's opinion means something um and uh, we cannot wait to hear yours uh last and in no way least obviously this is someone that has been making the rounds not only is he on this podcast he's on two others everborn saga how the heck are you my brother Hey, 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 man. I know that I stepped in uh, r right after 
gaming forte, but I didn't know I would also be doing a million podcasts like him. So <laughs> funny how that turned out. How's everybody? <laughs> How's everybody doing this evening? Mr. Chris, uh, thank you for, for joining us. Also a big fan. I first saw you on RDX, so yep. it's kind of weird to, to, to be on the same show with you. So very awesome. Been following you on Twitter for a little while. I'm excited. A lot of things to talk about tonight. Well, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, that's actually where I saw Chris the first time. And we love, uh, you know, what I loved about him then and what we're going to get today is that he is a, his opinions are real. They're raw and they're from a place of trust and understanding. And uh, you know what? You can't ask for a better person to have on the panel as a guest, and we are honored to have him. Let's get right into the first topic of the show, folks. And listen, you know, some people don't like to give credit where credit is due. And I am not one of those people. Uh, I am someone that uh, considers himself to be a gamer first. Uh, Xbox is my, uh, you know, my, my love, if you will. It's my first choice of where I'm going to game, but I'm open about supporting the PlayStation 5 as well as the Nintendo Switch and hopefully soon enough the Switch Pro. And one of the things that Sony does extremely well one of the things that stands out for Sony and their millions and millions of fans is the way they handle their first party games. And uh, 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 last month and a couple of months even before then, we were treated to some incredible footage from Ratchet and Clank that is launching very soon. Uh, and last week, uh, we were treated to 14 minutes of Horizon Forbidden West gameplay. And I got to tell you, folks, as someone that has been championing this game since its inception, someone that has stood by Aloy's side, even when people were giving her a lot of crap, I walked away absolutely impressed. Um, I'm hoping that it does release this year. There was some leaked information that happened today where the date for November 30th has been leaked out. I don't know how true it is, but apparently that is when they're going to launch this game. And that would be fantastic for me because it is going to come at a time where a lot of games are coming out. But this is one of those open world games that I really love. And uh, it's what I enjoy about owning a Sony product. Uh, they're over the shoulder, story driven adult themed type of games with realistic graphics is something that i gravitate to and that is why i own that console uh the use of the dual sense also uh, is another addition that i'm looking forward to simply because of what i experienced with astrobot which i platinumed uh, i'm very excited to see what uh guerrilla games is able to do in fact with this new controller and i think we're going to be very impressed but again, the only real issue I had from this 14-minute demo was the fact that we did not get a confirmation from Sony themselves of the release date, which had me believing that we could get it early 2022. And of course, we had the new today where the rumored uh, date is now November 30th, but we will soon see. And of course, take that with a grain of salt until we hear from Sony. But Chris, I got to bring you right into the conversation because, you know, besides um, many people in the community, whether you were a Sony fan or not, walked away incredibly impressed by this 14 minute gameplay. I mean, we got to see new gadgets. We got to see the game running at 60 frames per second, but on the ha back half of it, I kind of want to come back to you after we give, we hear what you have to say about the game, about the controversy about the, you know, that she, the character's face is a little bit more fuller than before. And I got to tell you, man, there's been no time in my podcasting career that I've been more disappointed with people, um, you know, really going in on this. Uh, I felt the same way about the whole Craig situation with Halo. And I will say the same thing now that I think it's, it's, it's rubbish in my opinion. But Chris, where were your feelings regarding the 14 minute demo? Were you impressed? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, a little bit biased. I just, so I spent more to shy two years with Guerrilla Games when I worked on Killzone 2. Um, and obviously, an extremely talented uh, studio, which has just uh, you know gone grown bigger and bigger, gone from strength to strength. And obviously, they've got an awesome engine in uh, Decima, which obviously drives all that game. I think, Joe, you know, the game looked incredible. Um, obviously, you know, the gameplay looked good. I think... 
The only thing I would say is uh, I'm not sure it was 60. I think it was uh, 30 frames a second at the minute, so I'm not sure we've uh, it's been confirmed that it will be 60. I presume there'll be a 60 uh, FPS mode, but um, I'm sure that demo was running. Well, uh, yeah, I'm pretty certain the demo was running at 30, um, uh, even on the 4K stream that they put out. But um, yeah, so I mean, it could be a gameplay choice. You know, it's not kind of a digger hardware or anything which a lot of people want to uh want these things to be um and obviously on the alloy side of things i mean it's i've tried to stay out of it because it's just been kind of outrageous on twitter i think a lot of people don't realize is that could be art direction um it could be you know a number of things um and i think the fact that people are kind of shouting that you know she's got like manly features and doesn't look like a, a true female anymore and stuff. I think uh, Joe, it, it can only be kind of trolls and people who aren't. Joe, I've got a serious opinion because Joe, we've got to think about kind of art style, look and feel. I think character model looked amazing. I think environments looked awesome. Um, I think obviously underwater, uh, there was so much kind of vibrancy and, and, and everything that was happening. Um, but to be fair, I wasn't really you know surprised at what, you know, Gorilla would come up with. Obviously, the first game was great. Um, and you've seen what the engine's capable of. And obviously, the, the, the team are really good at what they do. But, yeah, I think all this kind of uh, alloy stuff is, is is a whole bunch of nonsense in the same way that, obviously, the Craig memes were, etc. Yeah, you know what? I mean, listen, everyone is ent- entitled to their opinion. And I, I would never go out of my way to poke fun at someone that is making fun. If this is what you're into, hey, listen, you know what? Good on you. Uh, I, I though I, I'm not going to I'm not going to get involved in it. Um, like I said, I have been a fan of this game um, since its original inception. I think that when you look at uh, the who it's coming from, when you look at Guerrilla Games, who is only known for a first person shooter, for them to come out of the park with an incredibly massive hit like Horizon uh, for, um, Horizon Zero Dawn it's, you know, is incredible. Uh, and to see that they have now even made the game, the original game, which I thought was flawless in itself, better. Now, I know some people walked away with some of the side missions, like, you know, finding the guy's cane because he couldn't walk, but find it to be, you know, you know not fun or, or silly or whatever. And, and I, again, I totally get it. Um, but I walked away from this. I put it to this way. Uh, my stamp on uh, on the whole situation is this is why you buy a PlayStation 5, uh, for, at least in my opinion. I, I didn't buy a PlayStation 5 to play Resident Evil or Fallout 6 or, I mean, uh, Fallout, uh, Far Cry 6 or any of the third party stuff. I, I do that on Xbox. Uh, but I did buy a PlayStation 5 to support their first party games that I, I thoroughly enjoy. You know, let's let's bring uh, Mag in on the conversation. Mag, listen, you, you've seen what Twitter has been like over the weekend. Yeah. I know a lot of people are just having some fun with it, and I totally get it. Um, but I don't necessarily know if I would find people's opinions valid. If you walked away and said this, the, the, that what we saw, the 14-minute gameplay demo was yeah. not good. Uh, I, I again, maybe Horizon isn't for you. Maybe Aloy is not a character that you can get behind. If that's the case, I hear you. I would never dare even challenge that. But we cannot argue what was on display. What were your thoughts on the 14 minute demo? But more importantly, the controversy surrounding her having a fuller face than <laughs> last time. Well, I'll get into the controversy after but I'll, I'll tell you my feelings about the um about the 14 minute uh, uh vertical slice that we watched there um first things first i'm a sucker for lush environments yes okay you give me any game where there's like a jungle or there's greenery or there's rivers and like just like like i said lush environments i'm a sucker for all that that's why i've always been a fan of like you know your tomb raiders uh your uncharted's that kind of thing right even uh, even last of us like you know with the overgrown you know, vegetation and stuff, and even the, uh, uh, you know, areas where you fight in the, or play in the, um, the the forest and all that kind of stuff. I love that stuff. Okay. Because it adds so much more depth and it just shows how much more you could do with them, um, uh, you know, with the digital animation and the, and the artwork and everything else. Uh, whereas I think when I go back and I think about um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, it was a pretty barren landscape. I mean, it was sort of like a, like a deserty kind of, you know, 
dead fields kind of thing with like dead grass and yeah okay there were some areas like that even the dlc there was like that that snowy area up in the mountain and stuff all right it had a little variety that was nice but i saw this and i'm like i'm in i'm in hook like a uh, hook line and sinker because i'm like i said i'm a sucker for this kind of stuff and i just love my games to look beautiful another one that re uh, reminds me of a uh, uh, gears hive busters you know, high busters and like those jungles and all that stuff. And beautiful, beautiful, absolutely scenery, greenery. And even yeah. like when you move through the bushes, they moved with you. Yeah, lo lots Stunning. to get excited about. Um, yeah. Battlefront two. Uh, when you're fight, when you're playing on Endor, same thing, right? Like all that stuff. So, anyways, besides all that, getting into the actual uh, demo. Uh, shout out to Jay Barry, by the way, because I was watching the ILP podcast and he was on there, and he actually he was the only person who noticed what I noticed, at least from that panel. And um, it was something very interesting. It was a small, minute little thing, but I found it interesting, is that there was a scene where the, uh, where Aloy was, fight, was fighting, and she had her bow, okay? And then, like, did, like, a, like a sort of, like, a dive or, like, a, like, a, like, a judo, like, a judo roll or something, whatever, you know, like, the dodge out of the way. And she was still holding the bow. But when she did the move, instead of just having, like, a generic, you know, diving animation that you would use, like, over and over and over and over again, she actually took the bow and stuffed it under her armpit and her elbow and then did the roll. So like I to me, I know that sounds ridiculous, but to me that shows attention to detail. Yes. So depending on what she's holding, whether it's a spear, whether it's a bow and arrow or God knows whatever weapon she's going to have in this game, okay? It just showed an attention to detail that someone sat down and literally thought of every single different weapon that she's going to hold and then had to do an animation for that to add that realism to it. Right. And I really appreciated that. So that was another one thing I did. I, I really appreciated the underwater stuff. Fantastic. As expected. Um, I, I thought it looked really good. Literally. Like, now here's another thing. Actually, they did take direct feedback from the first game uh, where, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people were vocal about the fact that it was a pretty barren world other than your, you know, your mechanical dinosaurs running around and stuff, right? <laughs> but it was a pretty barren world. This world looked alive, you know? And when you go into the water and you see schools of fish in the distance and you see birds up in the sky and all this other kind of stuff, it made you feel like you're in a living, breathing, you know, environment, which is what you're looking for. I mean, when you're playing an open world game, you don't want to be playing like, you know, just you running around this big barren wasteland. You want to see things as you would as if you stepped out your own front door and walked out somewhere. You're going to see birds chirping. You're going to see animals running. You're going to see squirrels jumping around on fences and whatever else, right? And so they added that in here. Um, and another thing about the swimming, too, um, another little detail I enjoyed is that when she changed direction, even ever so slightly, her limbs also accommodated the new position she was in. So, for example, like when she was swimming, instead of, you know, the same old generic kick your feet like a dolphin kind of deal, she would adjust and like pivot her right leg as like she was looking off to the left kind of thing. And I'm like, wow, that's what I'm looking for. And I know it sounds ridiculous to be like, you know what? When I look at like next gen or whatever, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I'm I looking mean, for I, you that. know, what? one of the things that you talk about, uh, yeah. and I have to bring this up, uh, um, Mag, is the fact that for you, these games are damn near $100. Yes, um, they are. They're 105 so for me. Right, so if you want, if you're going to drop down that kind of money on a one game, you want that game to be the best it can be, and I, and honestly, I think Guerrilla Games has delivered. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Now that you mention that, is that when I and I've told you this before, is when it comes to my PlayStation Five. I'm going to be a little bit more discerning as to what I purchase because of the price. Now, of course, I could wait, you know, and get it for half price down the road or whatever. But if I don't want to wait, which I don't want to wait for this game, I want to buy it. I want to make sure that I'm getting every penny out of it, right? And so the thing is, when it, when you when you mentioned actually at the beginning of the show that it's what almost double the size of the first one, yes, there's going to be a lot to do. So yes. therefore, it's earned my money. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be putting anywhere between 100 and God knows 150 hours into this, maybe 200. I don't know if this is going to be like an Assassin's Creed, you know, where you basically it, it could you know, very Assassin's well be Creed. though. It could be. I mean, like an Assassin's Creed is basically like a career move, you know, like I'm about to start Valhalla <laughs> and you know me, boom, I do not stop till I get a thousand out of a thousand. Yes. Okay. So if it takes me 300 hours, you know, that's what it's going to take. But anyways, the point is, is that it seems that this game will be the same thing and I'll get lost in this world. I will pay the $105 to get lost in this world and play it for many hours, many weeks. Okay. And then of course, DLC down the road and whatever else I'm in on that. 
Okay, so I'm sold on this game 100%. I think it's going to be great. Now, I'm still going to wait for reviews, see how it goes and whatever, just to just to get like sort of a litmus test as to how it's going, whatever, right? Now, the controversy quotes. How ridiculous are some of these people? I'm, You know what? I'm just going to say it. I know everybody's thinking it. I'm just going to say it. These are video game virgins. OK, these are virgins. OK, these are the guys that sit in the computer. You know that, you know, that the South Park, uh, the South Park meme with the guy sitting at the computer with like grease running down his chin with a little, uh, you know, click in his mouse. That guy, those are the guys complaining about it, because let me tell you something, please. If I were Aloy, hey, guys, I got to go to the other side of the world and I'm going to go fight a war. Oh, I better bring my mascara. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, that was the other thing. They're like, oh, well, she should put some makeup on and this and that. I'm like, is she going to a dance or is she going to war? And she's going to be running in the mud and in the water and in everything else. And like they, they were talking about that. You see those pictures that they had on Twitter of like one with her all done up in makeup and everything else. And then it showed like what they showed from the vertical slice. And I'm like, and the problem is like, what yeah. is she going to do? Oh, sorry. There's mechanical dinosaurs outside. Let me put some foundation on so I look better and let me blow dry my hair. Like Jesus Christ, let her Mac, fight the Mac, dinosaurs. Yeah, Mac, they want her to look like Bryce Dallas Howard in yeah, okay. uh, the Jurassic <laughs> World movies. It's exactly. Okay, like utterly ridiculous. Okay, or you know, these are the same people that want you know they want Malena, who's fighting for her life in a tournament with Shang Tsung. But please make sure she wears a purple thong while she's doing it, <laughs> like and high heels. You know, because you know you can't defeat sorcerers unless you're wearing six inch stilettos and a thong. Like Jesus Christ! Like, come on, guys, get it together, or else even the, these Japanese, these nonsense Japanese fighting games, like Dead or Alive, okay, where their boobs are bouncing around like crazy every time they throw a punch. I'm like, and they're all wearing bikinis. I'm like, guys, come on, man. Like, this is going for a little bit more of a realistic situation. It's just like Ellie. You remember they said the same thing about Ellie. Ah, oh, man, look at her. It's all dirty and ugly and this and that. I'm like, what? I go, do you see what she's doing in that game? She's killing people. She's like literally face down in the mud and in the dirt, not showering for weeks at a time. Or what the hell do you think she's going to look like? You know what I'm saying? Like th th these are survival situations where these people are supposed to look like that. And they went for a more realistic look and approach to it. And so the same thing with Ally. As for her face, that's just I don't think that they added weight. Or whatever. I think it was just the animation, just the way it looked. It might have been just someone like, you know, screenshotting a little shot. Because when I was watching it, I didn't really notice that. It Me was the either. same, like it was the same thing when I watched Halo with Craig. I didn't see Craig until someone pointed it out. I never saw a problem with Halo Infinite until well, I mean, there was some like you know, some of the edges. I mean, he had of some the, popping the... and stuff, but it still did not look like the way that they but listen, yeah, the same way I defended it. Halo is the same way I think I'm gonna defend this game yeah. with the with the with the ridiculous nonsense. Right. And like the same like like I say, I'm I'm with you hundred percent on that, like with Halo and of course with uh, Horizon Forbidden West. I when I watched the Halo Infinite thing, I said, All right, cool, I'm in. Let's yeah. do it. Right. And then I didn't think anything of it beyond that. Now I did see it did say it was, it, you know, it wasn't quite ready. So, yeah, there were a couple of like jagged trees and stuff like that. They weren't like, you know, the animation didn't look 100 percent complete. Yeah, there was a little bit of pop in here and there. OK, fine. You know, but the game wasn't out. Now, the thing is with this one, this one looked a lot more polished, but that's what Sony does. Sony, you know, they like to put that big glossy finish on everything. Right. So it, it makes everything look pretty. That's I mean, let's their face marketing. It. That's their marketing. And at the end of the day, they're also, you know, they're in the movie business. These guys know how to sell a product. You know what I'm saying? So they know what they're doing to make the big flashy kind of whatever. But you know, at the end of the day as well, that they also deliver solid product. Okay. I mean, you know, apart from like some of the technical issues that you had with um, uh, Returnal and whatever else. But on the whole, you have to say that like when Ratchet and Clank come out, you think it's going to be a disaster? Not a chance. No. It's going to be incredible. Same yeah. thing with this game. I think it's also going to be a big hit and it's going to be excellent and whatever else. Now, uh, that's what I see about this whole thing. And there was something else. And I now I can't bloody remember what. Oh, I remember what it was. The release date. Sorry, I'm, I didn't want to be rambling forever. But I want to get this out of my system here. The release date. And a lot of people are like, ah, they didn't say anything. It's not coming out till 2022. I'm like, no, guys. I really do think it's still coming out 2021. However, I think that because Sony's such a reactionary company, I'm thinking that they didn't say the date until after E3. Because they want to see when everything else is coming out. You mean by everything else, you mean Halo. What? Right? Okay. All right. I'll All right. Every board. I mean, there's Halo, it. but there's Battlefield 6. You know, there's uh, there's Call Far Cry 6. Call of Duty. You don't, like, we don't know. Well, we know when Far Cry 6 is coming out. And, uh, oh, and sorry, Dying Light 2 is in December, right? 
December and, 7th, yeah. Right. And then uh, I believe Far Cry is October 7th. And now I think that Sony's going to wait to see when Halo drops and then when they're going to see when Battlefield 6 and Call, uh, Call of Duty drop. Because then they could strategically say, okay, you know what? Let's release it, whatever. I don't know, September 3rd. Let's do it then because then that'll give us time to breathe. We can get some big sales in there before these other big games drop. Or they wait, which I don't see them doing because, I mean, if you look back at history, every time that they show one of these like larger sort of in-game or, uh, you know, a, a whatever, little, a vertical slices of their games, like even Ghost of Tsushima, whatever, Last of Us 2, all that stuff, they released within months, which means that the game is basically ready. Okay, so I think that they'd be willing to launch anytime between September and December. It's just a matter of, I think they're just going to wait till E3 is done and then say, okay, guys, we got all the dates. Now let's do something. Because like I said, Sony is reactionary. They always wait for everybody else to do something. And then they strategically plug themselves into a good spot. So anyways, that's what I see. Sorry about all the rambling, but that's all my feelings about it. I'm excited for this game. No, no, that that makes two of us. Cybernox, let's get your opinion on this. What, where, where do you feel this mm -hmm. demo did justice or not to the game? And more importantly, what are your opinions on the controversy regarding them saying she looks a little bit more mannish, if if that's even a word? Yeah. Uh, well, in regards to the controversy, it's just what you guys have been saying. I think it's utterly, uh, it's a little bit ridiculous. You know, um, I didn't even know. Like, I, I personally didn't. I, I, I don't you know when i'm playing a game or something i don't notice things like that i'm more looking into like the animation the gameplay graphics you know a, a graphical fidelity you know picture quality things like that so um yeah man to me i i, I personally i didn't even boom i didn't had i hadn't even seen these memes and the, the whole uh, thing that was going on on twitter until I saw Ains put up that thing on his show, you know yeah. what I mean? That people are talking about. Yeah, it, but you I know what? He laugh. he did he did it in jest. Uh, there were 100, people 100 really taking this to yeah. task. Yeah, it, no, there's, I know. There's a big and huge then difference. after that, yeah, exactly. And after that, that's when I saw. Man, it's just ridiculous. Come on, guys. Like, uh, we're playing. Be, these be games. better. That's what I yeah, say. Be exactly. Better. Be better. Yeah. Pretty much it. In regards to the game, I've consistently said over and over, like, um, the game, like that demo looked incredible. Sony the way they market their games though they're like um their marketing department are showcasing their first party games and i think and i send that that question to ains as well they're geniuses man like it looks good it hypes it gets you hyped up um you know game looked like the the picture quality like the graphical fidelity of that game looked incredible in my opinion now i didn't play i i had the first game but i never played it like it's still wrapped you know um but um I, I i'm starting to see the hashtag cancel cybernox is yeah cancel cyber right exactly. i don't understand no, this. i i definitely want to play it uh game looks good it's like the that world it's very intriguing to me like the concept of that world you know what i mean uh with all the robots you know the you see all the raptors in the beginning of this one and you know the mammoth at the end as as a boss and they're all robots and obviously i don't know what happens in the story because of the first one but i, I want to go back and, and play the first one now with that said um when mag was like the little uh attention to details that he was talking i thought he was going to mention something else like when her hair is uh, is like when she has all her gear on her back her hair actually goes in between her gear you know that's what he was gonna i thought that's what he was gonna mention too and i noticed that regardless of the way she's moving it's actually like reflecting the way it's bouncing up against her weapons and i thought that was pretty cool and also like uh when the ocean like, when like the waves hit like crash on shore like mist comes up you know it was just i thought it was a uh, great that atmosphere that world i also but i also you know i, I was questioning myself i was like okay this all it's a graphical showpiece the game looks great the gameplay looks great but this is also a cross-gen game right like what's making this ps5 version superior to the ps4 with the exception of let's say uh let's say graphics right or maybe a little bit more frames but as to this uh to to today um, we haven't heard if it's going to be a 60 frames. Obviously, they've had 60 frames on all this game, uh, a 60 frames option on their games on the first party till today, till this day. So I'm assuming that game will also have uh, uh, 60 frames. But, you know, I think some uh, when I was discussing with a couple of friends of mine, it's like these first couple of games, like these first few games that come out in the beginning of gen the generation kind of don't um, 
portray what exactly like the potential of what next gen could be because to me frankly like everything that she's doing in that world has been done uh on the on the last gen right so i was looking for something to wow me like really wow me like gameplay wise or, or something like that because it, and nothing really grabbed me that way now i liked what i saw because I, I enjoyed that the open world and the gameplay graphically it looked great but like if you look at the last of us 2 right even though i, I never want to play that game again i can i can obviously say uh from a technical standpoint that game was also amazing right like graphical fidelity was there gameplay the animation everything was there and that was a last gen game so i know uh, this game is in my opinion um is gonna blow people away you know and i will for sure pick it up when i can but this might be a, i might wait to play the first one be before i pick up the, the second one but for I, I would show, definitely consider yeah. playing the first one before you i'm not yeah. saying that you but, shouldn't buy the second one i'm saying oh, that you for should sure, yeah. definitely play the first but from what they showed man it looks great it looks it, it, i thought it was really well done like the transitioning between you know when she's you know diving into the water like the under the uh underwater like the world there it was everything just you know was spot on like i said sony showcase to their first party games they do a tremendous job of getting you know their fan base and potential fans hyped for these types of games and i think they delivered it again on this game yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, Tempest Sun, I, I've been dying to get your opinion on this because I don't think that you have been a big fan of the game. And, of course, listen, we, everyone's opinion is valid, even if we don't agree. And that's the great point about these talk shows. So, Tempest, what were your feelings on the 14-minute demo? But more importantly, do you have any opinions on the controversy surrounding her face being fuller than the original um, uh, uh, the game? Okay, so I have an opinion on both um you are right um you, you can not every you say it all the time boom not every game is for every gamer correct right? yes i looked at that trailer with an open mind i was actually excited to see the reveal i watched it the second that it played i was excited to see it that being said <clears throat> i would say if you look at, at my opinion uh, it didn't ex it didn't excite me Big surprise. Ooh, you call me next bot, whatever you want. It just, I played the first one. I, I bought my PlayStation 4. I bought the game. I think I got it on sale at the time. It was like 50, 50 bucks or 55 bucks or something. Um, I, I played it for about, I think, 17 or 18 hours. I don't know. You can check my whatever it's called, you know, gamer tag on there. And I just stopped playing it. I just got bored, right? Got bored. So that was like, that was like a small little adventure of, finding out a game's boring to you 17 hours in, you know? So that's the way I kind of felt with it. I didn't see anything new enough uh, for me uh, to indicate that it's anything more than just more horizon, right? The same thing could be said for gears. If you mad, if you didn't like gears one, when you got to gears three and decided to jump back into it, unless it was like a decade later and your gaming taste just decided to change, right? You know, you probably weren't going to be a fan of gears three. The same thing could be said for any of the halos. The only exception or one of the rare exceptions is if a, a game in the series changes perspective or genre like resident evil, or let's say mass effect, mass effect one, very different than mass effect two. Yes. You, you could play mass effect one and hate it. But three years later, if you decided for whatever reason to give Mass Effect 2 a try, you could love that game because it's very different, right? <laughs> so I just don't see me. I'm not, this isn't making me want to pick up a PS5 right now. Um, eventually, when that one game does hit that I, I can't get on Xbox or PC, and it's like, let's just say they come out, you, you know where I'm going with this. If like a new Gundam game that I can't get anywhere else and it well, looks cool. Yes. I will, I will buy it from a scalper. I don't give a crap. I would buy the PS5, okay? <laughs> I would get it if I need it, all right? So Horizon wasn't doing it for me there. Um, as far as the community goes, okay, um, uh, one thing I do see, I'm not going to mention any anybody's names, but... There's a lot of like quote unquote Xbox guys that are trashing this game and also defending this game. And on some posts, not even people really being super malicious, they'll post a screen grab from the 4K version of the, the, the YouTube video. Um, they'll post like screen grabs just like they did with Craig. 
And I have to be honest, there's certain parts in the demo that looked incredibly low res, like water textures being horrible, pop in, you name it. But as soon as people post that stuff, I've seen a lot of like, quote unquote, x dudes be like, oh, you're just, you guys are idiots. You're just fanboying. Meanwhile, when, you know, Halo had their reveal, uh, it was okay for even Xbox guys to bash Halo. Nobody defended it, like nobody. So I do say there's like a little bit of a difference there. I don't quite get it. Even in that regard, I think it's a little sketch. I just, I don't know why that's the case. It seems like a lot, a lot of like predominantly Xbox guys, you can't criticize Horizon if you want to, you know? And some of the criticism is there, just like it was there for Halo in any game that has these demos, right? So that's one thing that kind of like bugged me. Now, the the AY controversy. So here's where I stand on it. I noticed it. I noticed it right away. And my reaction to myself was, yeesh. <laughs> you know, and that was just my reaction. Okay. I didn't know it was going to turn into a big thing, but it did. And where I stand on it is you actually brought up a good point, Boom, that I never thought of. People are making fun of her being a little more masculine and a little more heavy. Because you said maybe the mocap person gained weight. So I was like, oh, I wonder who it is. I looked it up. Her name is Hannah Hostra, I think it is. She's a, she's an actress. And um, beautiful woman. <laughs> beautiful woman. I'll look at the pictures of her right now. As a matter of fact, I don't even think this is subjective. I just think, hands down, she's far prettier than Aloy. And if it is her mocap version... You know, to me is where I is where I step in and my feelings on it. They purposely, purposely, it's a fictitious character, Aloy. They purposely made her heavier, more masculine. Now, I don't know if this Hannah would care that they did that, but this Hannah looks way more feminine and attractive than Aloy. Uh, it goes a step further. It's also a Sony game, but I, I mostly notice it on, on and I'm not to Mag's point. I'm not looking for makeup. I'm not looking to be dolled up. You know, I mean, look at uh, Lara Croft is the most perfect example. Half the time she's covered in blood, guts, grime, you name it. Insanely attractive at all times. Even the, even even with the blood and guts and mud on her, right? No makeup whatsoever. Right. Still an attractive character model, right? So that's like the perfect example of she wasn't over-sexualized, almost not sexualized at all. And she's still attractive. Fictitious character, but still attractive. Uh, look at Dina from The Last of Us 2. I've seen this brought up before. Her uh, her mocap actress is uh, 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 Cassina uh, Curandana. I, I forgive for mispronouncing the name, but very, very cute girl. Uh, if, you, if you look at the in-game model versus uh, Cassina, the actual person, you can tell they took a lot of the feminality or the, the femininity out of her uh, and gave her broader shoulders, more masculine features, just overall less, you know, attractive. And that's just, and that's a one for one. Her face model is pretty much one for one. They just made her a little bit more manly in the game. So, and then look at Abby. I mean, hell, you put a, you put a goatee on Abby and she's more manly than Kratos. And I mean that she is, it's, it's bizarre, you know? So I'm like, so we're all, as I'm going with this, I, I never would have made fun, fun uh, of Aloy. I never would have poked fun, probably would never have brought it up, even though I noticed it myself. I just like, let me, let me put it in this perspective too. The biggest hunk in the video game industry, the most manly man of all time, Chris Redfield. All right. That's my opinion. That's my boy. Right. I practically have a man crush on the guy. If, they, if he came out in Resident Evil 9 and weighed about a buck 50 and not 250 of, of pure muscle, and he had a different haircut, no facial hair, and they really dolled him up, hell, maybe even gave him some like mascara or something like that. I personally, as a man, I'd be like, oh, I think they would gut him. That would be gut-wrenching to me if they did that to the guy character. Let's take Dante. Get rid of his facial hair. Give him a nice prim and proper haircut. Not look scraggly. Not like he's ready to you know, throw fist to cuffs in a bar. And made him really more feminine. That would bother me. So I don't know how a lot of, of women feel. I really don't. The only person I can speak for, and she's not on the show, but I, I know how my wife feels. My wife is personally disgusted with a lot of this stuff. Uh, half the time, there's a game with a character creator. 
her 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 goal in most of these games is to literally just not make her character created character ugly. That's like the best she can get out of a lot of these games. If there's a character creator um, and she doesn't quite understand it as well. A lot of times she'll actually refuse to play certain games. Now that's my wife. That's on me, but you know, I can kind of see it. You know, I, my wife wants to play is like a, a, a powerful female led character. And she wants to feel like she's playing as a feminine character, you know? So I can't really play just like me. I want to play as a beefy buff Chris Redfield. So I just see a trend in the gaming industry. The only region that's not affected by this almost at all is the Asian region, albeit Korean, Japanese, Chinese games, whatever. They seem to be completely unaffected by this. I feel like maybe some of these game directors are trying to try so hard not to offend that they just swung things so far in the other direction where I think they lost a little bit of that. It's okay to be an attractive, you know, well-designed female character and still kick ass. Like Bayonetta is Bayonetta. Lara Croft is Lara Croft, right? And they kick ass just as well as the guys do, sometimes better. And, you know, coming from me, I would rather play as a female character than a male character. If you ever see any of my gameplay footage, whatever, I play as females. I just like doing it. And um, so I, there, I feel like there's nothing wrong with being feminine and still kicking ass. So that's my take on I'm sorry I was really long-winded. It's just this kind of stuff has been eaten away. I've never had the opportunity to really like speak out on it. So thank you, Boom. No, so, dude, anyway, listen, you're, 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 you're a founding father of this show. You're an <laughs> important part of the community and your opinion matters. And dude, thank you so much for being honest. I, I think it was absolutely fantastic. Everborn yeah. Saga. You know, I, I want to go to you next because, you know, like Chris, you are a developer. You have the Everborn Saga. It's your baby. It's something that you take pride in, in working on. Where where did you fall with the 14-minute uh, slice of gameplay? But more importantly, where do you fall on the quote-unquote controversy regarding her look? Um, okay, so let's start with the game uh, first, and then we'll get into the, the, the whole drama stuff. Uh, the game, I really enjoyed what I saw because uh, just uh, in case everyone doesn't know, I know I've said this a bunch of times, but I had basically taken off of gaming for like five years before this generation started. So I missed all of these games. I'm literally playing God of War 2018 and Horizon Zero Dawn like right now. And nothing along, wrong with that, uh, dude. Uh, nothing uh, wrong along, with that along with Gears 5 and Titanfall 2, and I'm having an amazing time, right? Um, but there are things, one thing I did play when it came out, because I will always do this, no matter what's going on in my life, is play uh, Halo, Mario, and Zelda. Those are my top three fr gaming franchises all time, right? So when I play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I got a lot of Breath of the Wild vibes. Right. And but Horizon Zero Dawn to me didn't do what Breath of the Wild did as well. It, it probably had a better story. I'll give them that. Uh, but what I saw in this uh, vertical slice kind of addressed all the issues that I'm currently having with Horizon Zero Dawn. Right. And I really I cannot tell you how much I loved the Raptors. Right. And if that is what the the pacing of uh, if they can keep that pacing in this game, th the idea that the because the, the AI on those Raptors was amazing, just like, you know, Raptors were smart in Jurassic Park. Right. How they were chasing her up and she had to find a way out and then she has to go down uh, into the water and then catch the riptide and uh, use that to get away. I loved, loved, loved all of it. So I'm I'm very excited and I'm going to. I probably wouldn't have continued with Horizon Zero Dawn, but I am now because I want to be ready for when Forbidden West comes out. Now, yeah, I, I started picking it up again myself. I, I kind of want to get acclimated with it as well. Right, and 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 like, I I so what I think what they showed was amazing, and I think one thing I did found interesting, and I shared this in the private chat. There's like a disclaimer there that said 
this is uh, this footage. It was captured on a PS5, and it's it's comprised of CGI and uh, in-game footage, right? But I couldn't tell where the where the scenes. I, there's some places I think I could tell, but like I think that that is it's not the point that some of it was CGI. The point is that they were able to so seamlessly switch and have the fidelity close enough to where people could barely tell and they had to question, right? Uh, which one is the CGI and which one's the gameplay. So I think I think that's that part of it, what they've done there is, is really, really good. Um, and I'm interested to see how this all pulls together in the actual game. If they can keep that up, I'm telling you, they have something really, really special on their hands. And as far as the release date, boom! I don't know if I believe that November 30th thing. No, I don't. Because, I don't either. And, but I, let me I tell you why. Is, get, let me tell you why get, I don't get. believe it. Because I think the cutoff for game of the year is November 12th. Right. That is correct. And yes. they are not going to want to miss that because you know how much Sony allegedly cares about these uh, game of the year awards, right? And I, I really, I do mean it. I think, you know, maybe, you know, Call of Duty or, or whatever else they're looking for, but I really think it's Halo, right? Because you don't want to be in the same week as Halo. I don't, I don't really care who you are. And even if it's not because you think it's going to cannibalize your sales, which it would, you, Sony is kind of like very shrewd and very they want the spotlight for themselves in, in, yes. in their marketing, right? They're gonna want the spotlight, but they're gonna always wanna release their bigger games in between the Xbox launches because it will drive home, look at what's on Sony and there's nothing new right now out on Xbox. And it just builds that mind share that, that they have everything you need. So I definitely think they are watching out for Halo with the release date. I don't know if it will release this year. I'm pretty sure it will because they they need something big for the holidays. God of War is an is another thing. I would be really surprised if they because I don't think they want it so close to God of War. No, right? no there's like, no right? way. There's so, yeah, there's no way. So so they, there's there's that uh, part of it. Um, I had zero problems with with Aloy's character model. My biggest problem with Aloy was the big head they gave her as a kid in, in Horizon Zero Dawn. Like she looked like Chucky, right? But I think <laughs> Aloy as an adult- I was laughing at that, but I was muted, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Aloy as an adult, I think she looks like a real person. There are real people that look like that. I don't think it's, I, you know, Tempest, I disagree with you a little bit. I know what you're saying. I know the point you're getting at, right? But. Um, there's a lot of people in many industries that that try to appease very sensitive people, but I don't look at this as that, right? Like Aloy, she doesn't care about makeup. She she was an outcast. She trained her whole life. She is a fighter. She will punch you in the face, yes. right? Laura Croft is Laura Croft. She is the goat. She's better than Nathan Drake. She's better than everybody else. However. It is not realistic that somebody that slim is going to be doing the kind of things that Laura Croft does. I'm sorry, right? You're not hanging by a few fingers from a ledge. You're not jumping like that in with that body type, right? Now, um, Aloy, I believe, could beat me in a fight, right? I think she could beat all of us in a fight. And <laughs> and so she she looks like a real human being, right? Like and 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 that is okay. Right. So uh, to me, I, I, I thought the, 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 the character model looked great. I think it's much to do about nothing. But I do also think that it's a different the Craig. I, I, I understand that the the reference to the Craig memes, but I think the Craig memes were something different because I feel like the Craig memes were just saying, like, OK, look at these low res textures. The Aloy memes is like, um, OK, look at this, um, you know, this uh fictional character that looks too real for me right like and i get it like and 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 again tempest i i know what you're saying because if you come from the anime world they don't they don't mess around like that all the women there are sort of um idealized or uh, versions or, or 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 fetishized or whatever it is like like aloy is not that they're not trying to make her a sex symbol and 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 that's 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 okay. I think I think it's fine. It's, and it's not about not offending anybody. I just think for her character, 
Like it works. Like she she basically grew up in the in the woods. Let me fighting dirty. Let me ask you this real quick, if I if I may uh, take a look at the comparison shots between Aloy's appearance in the first game versus this one. It, was there anything wrong with the appearance in the first one? I didn't have a problem with the first one. No. No. Okay. Well, I just I because I, I if you just like, compare the, the the two of them, you, you can see they're just trending in a certain way. So I was yeah, I was just like, why couldn't I, they keep that? You know, I, because I think that this one has more polygons in the face, and they're doing more in the way of motion capturing the the facial sort of animations mm -hmm. and i think that what you see here is a is a result uh of that right it could all be like the you know dots that they place on their faces and they want to catch more emotions and i and again more polygons i think will give you that and i think i could read more emotion in aloy's face in this what we saw in the 14 minutes than i could playing uh, zero dawn right now. And I think that's just, I think the problem really is, uh, we're just in, you know, ninth generation and the graphics are getting too real, right? Mm -hmm. I think Cause what it is, the best way to describe this is uncanny valley, right? So we're, we're in that place where it looks so real, but it's not actual real life that it starts to look scary. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. I think, I think that's maybe some of what we're seeing, but I personally, I, I love the character model and it's an over the shoulder game. So you're always mostly going to be looking at the back of her head. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a real issue that everyone's making it. But again, I do understand your point Tempest. I just, I think it's okay in, in the case of Abel. Gotcha. Fair enough. I mean, that's again, I agree. Fair. Chris, you wanted to jump in. I saw you post something in the, in the private chat. Uh, you, you had, you wanted to go basically talk about the, about the the vertical slice uh what wh what do you want to talk about with that yeah so obviously I agree a lot with what everborn's saying um and i think the my concern with a uh, vertical slice really is that um it's the it's kind of like the pinnacle of the moment in the game so it's it's obviously very scripted as we know yeah the uh, you know, the, the gameplay designer or whoever's kind of playing the game has been you know played the same route over and over again and obviously being taught or you know being told to play in a certain way so you then if you stick to that path and you play that way then the raptor ai performs perfectly you know um everything's kind of as it should be um and my concern my only concern and this is not a dig at guerrilla games this is kind of with any vertical slice if you go back to the division and all of these other Vertical slices where it was like the perfect co-op and everyone was kind of walking in, you know, in a like a formation and moving into a building together and it kind of looks really good. And if you get like a, a, a great bunch of friends and and play a game like that, an awesome experience. But if you jump into a team with some lone wolf who runs off and starts to kind of spawn enemies and stuff, then the whole kind of immersion is broken. So the vertical slice, you know, one of the things that we're kind of taught at Sony when we put like vertical slices together is we, you know, we choose a really kind of polished part of the game uh, and we kind of move over that time and time again. We make sure that any graphical anomalies are kind of sorted, any rogue AI or scripting or, or things like that, you know, that needs to look like a perfectly finished game. And as you know, some of the guys were saying earlier, you know, Sony are a movie company, uh, you know, movie business, they know how to kind of, sell a vision and you know direct a game and it's not to say there's movie guys sat there you know directing these kind of games with us but there's a you know, there's a very unique level of polish and i've said this time and time again on different podcasts is that you know sony are the masters of kind of, of of the cell when it comes to like a vertical slice and they'll make sure that they show god of war or they show you know ratchet or they show you know horizon when it's a perfect vertical slice so if you kind of rerun the game again and kind of run, uh, you know, rerun it back in your head, and then you kind of play it as a bit of a, you know, a, a bit of a kind of an idiot, <laughs> yeah, an idiot gamer, so to speak, and instead of jumping up those, you know, pillars to escape that kind of raptor chase, you know, what are those raptors doing? If you just stay at the bottom, are they aimlessly running up, the, you know, up to the top because they've been scripted that way for the perfect vertical slice, hey, or right. are they then going to not run up? And start to jump down and fight you at the bottom and things like that. So 
that's why I'm always a bit cautious about vertical, vertical slice. It's not me saying the game looks bad or anything. I think the other thing that Everborn picked up on as well is you had these like cinematic cuts, which personally I don't want in the game in the final game. So like when she was having a battle on on the beach, you know she yeah. she you know, kind yeah. of like power up device into into a spear, and it kind of cut away from the fight and. You know, that disorients it disorients as a player. You know, you're not quite sure which way was the camera facing. You know, why am I suddenly gone into this like, you know, Spider Verse type cutscene? And it's all for the the vertical slice. So part of me is thinking, is that's not going to happen in every combat encounter? You know, is it is it going to be pulled from the final game? Has it been used for you know what it needed to and to kind of you know set the scene and sell sell the story? You know, will it happen every so often? Um, those kind of like breaks in in control, uh, you know, I'm not a particular fan of because, as I say, it kind of disorients where you are in 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 the fight and stuff like that. So, I think there was a couple God of War. God of War does that really well. Like when yeah, you, true. Yeah. So if they if they can pull it off, if and that's a that's a that's an if, right? Because it's a you know a different engine or whatever, and it's a different fight style. But uh, I, you, you are you're correct. It, it'll be weird if they go into those like uh, Street Fighter super moves in the middle of a in the, <laughs> in the middle of, of like every fight. yeah every yeah. fight and it's and it's kind of like you know um, yeah it, it, if you can kind of you know use that power up time and time again and every time you use it you have like a you know a, a weird little cutscene and you can kind of use the power up every couple of seconds and it's like a cutscene power up cutscene fight you know so. It could get a bit odd. So I think there'll be decisions that are kind of made within the studio. I think the other thing as well is if, if we go back to like, uh, you know, Gorilla Days and Kill Zone 2, we had sections of that game which were finished far in advance of, of other sections. And you kind of, you know, consistently kind of polish them and polish them. And you can just play those encounters over and over again. And, you know, you could ship some of those encounters, but the rest of the game wasn't there. And obviously, We've seen a really awesome encounter. We've seen you know, some stalking. We've seen some combat. You know, we've seen some, um, you know, uh, animals or you know, or robots that you can jump on a ride and stuff. So we've seen a taste of what they're trying to. They're trying to show some, you know, um, mountables. They're trying to show some, you know, bit big enemy combat. You know, kind of grunt combat and um, obviously exploration and a bit of like parkour uh, type exploration, but. The other thing is when she jumps into the water, if you watch back on the video, there's a, an absolute cinematic cut that oh, yes. I for whatever that too, reason, yeah. they don't want you to kind of continue to follow her into the water at this stage. Um, so they're cutting to that. And it could be, you know, there could be a cut scene that, you know, they've taken out of it and they've they've done like a cut themselves. It could be a bit weird the way she jumps into the water and actually they're not managing to kind of load those underwater assets in you know, at, at a reasonable pace at the moment. So they've obviously edited slightly. So there's a lot of things in the vertical slice that, you know, gives you the perfect condition. Now, I just want to caveat and say, sorry, I was just going to say, just want to caveat and say, this is not me having a dig at Gorilla or saying, you know, they're not capable or anything like that because I, you know, first hand know how good that studio is. Um, but, it's it's what a vertical slice is, whether whether it's like the division, whether you know we saw that vertical slice on the division where they were shooting bullet holes in signs and the you know the god rays were coming through the sign and stuff like that, and they were massively toned down in the final game. Um, yes. So it's just to let people know, you know, that's the perfect, you know, the person's playing it as they they you know they have to play it so they can script it in a very controlled way. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of you know chip in on the vertical size. Uh, sorry, everybody. Yeah. No, 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 that's, no, no, that's perfectly all right. Uh, what, what I want to do is, uh, I, uh, we, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect to, to be an hour on this topic, but that's perfectly fine. I, I uh, Chris, I, I got to go back to you right away because I have to talk on Real Engine Five. You see, <laughs> when you talk about Sony, at least when I talk about Sony, it's it's almost like peanut butter and uh, chocolate. One doesn't go good without the other. And I'm talking about when you talk about Sony, you got to talk about Microsoft in some aspect. And when you talk Microsoft, well, you got to talk Sony because those are the two big dogs in the lot. And I, I want to uh, you know, focus your attention to the Unreal Engine 5 demo that they showed. And um, 
this was confirmed to be running on the Xbox Series X. Uh, it looked absolutely stunning. I, I would I would dare say that it looked as good, potentially even better than the original uh, demo that we, the Lumens demo we saw running on the PlayStation Five, which was originally depicted as only being able to play uh, be uh, seen on the PlayStation Five, and of course they have now that debunked that with this new footage, and it looked fantastic. Uh, this is where I get into the conversation, Chris. You know, one of the biggest criticisms from many gamers, and I'm not just talking about Sony players. I'm not talking about Sony haters. I'm not talking about the toxic community. Even even mainstay Xbox gamers. What we saw in that 14-minute vertical slice is what every Xbox gamer is expecting in the next generation. And as of this show, we do have confirmation on several games that will be using Unreal Engine 5, Hellblade 2 being one of them, Senua's Saga, Gears of War 6, uh, and potentially the uh, the smaller project that they're working on before Gear 6, In Exile's new first-person RPG, and I think, I'm not sure, Perfect Dark as well. Um, so my, my, my question to you, Chris, as coming from a Sony's point of view, now you've heard all of the cries from many fans that, are that, that own Xboxes, that bought an Xbox Series X with the uh, understanding that we would get those types of graphical fidelity titles coming. And with the confirmation of Unreal Engine 5 moving to several of their big first parties, do you expect the quote-unquote PlayStation-level graphics to adhere to many of the Xbox first party studios? Uh, well, I think <clears throat> obviously the Unreal 5 thing was just you know, a bit ludicrous and a, a bit of a PR play. You know, we know we know obviously Sony kind of invested into Unreal and you know uh, uh, Tim was out there kind of saying, well, I don't even know whether he said it or I can't remember but back then, but a lot of people were kind of saying this was, you know, only doable on the PS5 and stuff, and it was kind of like a really bad take because you obviously look at the previous Unreal Engines of, uh, you know, of obviously um, being supported across the different platforms. So it was always going to be a case that the likes of Coalition and Joe you know, and Co were going to kind of like start to use the newer tools and newer engine. Um, I'm not sure whether it was kind of like quoted out of context and people were kind of trying to say, or I think Tim Sweeney said it was you know, the speed at which like the world was being uh, loaded in or something. But I think we've come to realize that you know, the uh, place, PS5's SSD, whilst um, you know, incredibly quick, is not as uh, revolutionary and game changing as uh, as people were led to believe, you know, obviously some people were saying it was kind of like faster than a GPU and stuff like that, which was just all you know, ridiculous nonsense at the time. So I think that's slowly coming to fruition. I think the first part of studios will use, you know, every ounce of the PS5 in the right way. I don't think we're going to see that in Horizon because it's a cross-gen game. And obviously those guys and girls would have started it, you know, as a, as a PlayStation 4 game, really. Um, split off with the team and started working on it and now they're probably just trying to work through kind of decimer and things like that and see what um you know features they can introduce you know we don't know whether there's going to be ray tracing in there we don't know whether it's 60 and so on and so forth um i think there's it's a bit it's it's difficult really because i think you you have to kind of take into account into account like art styles so i think uh, different developers use different art styles for a reason you know and you know, we've got footage on of Dirt uh, at the moment, Dirt 5, and people were saying, you know, this didn't look like a good game. And, and it does. It looks like a great game for what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be kind of like, you know, Jim Carner type racing, you know, a bit of a festival and stuff like that. Yes, there are nicer looking racing games, um, but there's always something which looks a little bit nicer. And then you kind of think, well, why does it look nicer? Oh, actually, because they've gone for a more realistic style or they've, this, that, the other. Um and then you start to realize that it's it's really just like opinion as to why something looks nicer. Yeah, you can turn around and say it's a it's a higher res and this, that, the other. But a lot of these devs are going for an art style. So we're absolutely gonna see. I mean, the coalition produced some of the best games looking now, like Hive Busters, as was mentioned earlier. Yes. Looks absolutely, absolutely fantastic, phenomenal. dude. Gorgeous. Um 
So what they and they're you know they're rumored to be one of the best Unreal Engine developers out there. You know, doesn't matter what platform uh, you know you're on. So they're gonna they're gonna be producing something remarkable as they move forward because they're only gonna get better and better. Um, obviously, you've got kind of Hellblade two coming out, um, and again another phenomenally. Joe, you know, superbly well driven art directed studio. You know, everything they look at is meticulous and they're almost kind of like a, a you know, an insomnia or, you know, a naughty dog, you know, that type of developer in terms of like trying to make everything kind of meticulously look right, you know, the world, the lighting, the atmosphere, so on and so forth. So I think that's going to be absolutely superb. Um, and I think we're you know we're just starting in this generation. I think we're absolutely going to have some superb looking games. If you if you think of Halo Infinite, I mean the outcry over this stuff is 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 a weird one because obviously people have seen different Halos looking you know Guardians and Five and so on and so forth looking you know superb to this day. And for me, I still think the likes of you know Destiny Two. I think the Division. You know if you if you put the Division on Division One on. And look at auto HDR FPS boost. I mean, that game looks phenomenal. You know, it does. Snow it looks engine. absolutely incredible. It looks like a new exactly. game. Yeah, exactly. So that engine is superb. So you've got to kind of take into account, you know, what we were limited by on the previous generation of consoles and some of the stuff that we produced then. And obviously, we're early into this console cycle. Yes, I think Xbox need to come out fighting and they need to start showing more kind of. Um, you know, well, vertical slices, but they need to show more gameplay. You know, they need to show real world gameplay and stuff. I think the problem Xbox have got is, I think Sony's brand is powerful enough to kind of weather some of the storm. So we've seen a lot of things in the past where people have gone, "Oh, this game's been downgraded from what we saw on 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 PS4 Pro or what we've seen on PlayStation 5 or this, that, the other," and and that narrative's kind of you know quickly swept away because. The brand is what it is, and it, and it's got, you know, a fanatical following. You know, it's got kind of, you know, press to kind of support it, and this, that, the other. And I genuinely think Xbox are a little bit afraid of that type of reaction. You know, we look at what happened with Infinite, and for me, I looked at the Infinite demo and thought, and immediately thought, you know, it's a Halo game, and the gameplay looked, you know, superb. It, it was phenomenal. fast. It was like pick up a weapon, kill, move quick. You know. There was no kind of drops and stuff, and you've got to think that you know they're looking at they're going for like 120 frames per second on multiplayer, you know, 60 FPS. It's a very different game with a very different art style. Um, I think the stuff look, you know, I think it looks superb. I think it's going to have a uniqueness, but it's going to play like a Halo game, and that's what hardcore, you know, competitive Halo fans and gamers want. You know, they want it to play like a Halo game. It's you know. You can't. I, I've said before, I'd love to see like a darker Halo or something. You know, I think some of the uh, kind of enemies and stuff like that, you know, are a bit kind of colorful and and, and dorky and stuff like that. But <laughs> I understand that Halo, you know, to do to try and turn it dark or you know do a slightly different spin off or something like that. Um, you know, you're risking kind of you know hurting the fan base that has kind of stuck with it and so on and so forth. So I, I know the reason why they maybe not you know they wouldn't do something like that. Um, but it's a different concept that they're going for in terms of, you know, competitive multiplayer, you know, so on and so forth. And that's why these games across multi-platforms and even across the same platform kind of, you know, differ. Um, and I think people, I think certain people can get a bit caught up on, you know, it's an engine thing or it's, you know, the developers aren't good enough or so on and so forth and kind of forget about a particular art style or, you know, something that the the studio has sat down and gone we want the game to look like this we want it to feel like this we want it to play like this and they embark upon those decisions and 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 that art style they don't turn around and go oh my god you know um the last of us looks like this so we've got to make our game look like the last of us because you know it's not necessarily a gritty post-apocalyptic you know product and things like that so there's yeah, there's a huge difference between developers, and it's got hasn't really got anything to do with you know, can the hardware do it? Joe, you know, the developers good enough, and so on and so forth. There's a lot in Joe you know, direction, art direction. 
I mean, listen, I, and again, I, I thank you for the deep dive into this because that's you really hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think art direction is something that's completely overlooked in games. Uh, Sony has an art style. They have a way they want to tell their stories. Most of their big games are reminiscent of one another. And I don't take that. It's not a dig. It, it's what I love Sony for. It's why I own a PlayStation 5. It's why I only buy first-party games on there because they scratch an itch for me that is something that a lot of the fans dig. Uh, I thought uh, the Halo uh, the Halo Infinite footage from uh, July, I thought it was fine. I actually walked away quite satisfied. I said, you know, sure, did they, you know, you want to, you know, uh, beef up the graphics and, and, and you know, but we're going to get 11 months worth of polish the next time we see this game. Uh, if, if you consider that we're going to see it, they're going to have a big blowout at E3 in, a, mm -hmm. in, in, in only a week, Chris. So I'm expecting uh, what we because if you turn on Halo 5 right now, again, I did not like that story. Mm -hmm. That's well documented. But you cannot argue the graphical prowess of that game. It is stunning to look at. And if they can generate that type of, of graphics with the kind of gameplay we saw in July, I think every Halo fan is going to rise up out of their seats and cheer, to be quite honest. Uh, but great stuff, Chris, as always, bro. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Middle-aged gamer guy, the question for you, yeah, quite simply, is what are you expecting from Unreal Engine and Microsoft's first-party studio? Should fans be excited that many of the games that we know and love those franchises will be using this incredible new engine well the interesting thing, first of all how am i supposed to follow chris it's, after it's what he it, just it, said it's like, tough it's, yeah it's tough. holy mackerel that was it was uh <laughs> well spoken well educated well well presented and extremely knowledgeable and then of course this goon shows up a uh, middle-aged game guy and i'm like okay well you know what we're gonna talk anyway but anyways in all seriousness um, what I'm looking forward to now, the thing is, there's something interesting actually Chris brought up too. that the thing is with this, this engine doesn't really mean a lot in terms of like artistic style, right? Because you could, you look at something like you could say, okay, well, Unreal Engine 5, everything's going to look, um, you know, qu air quotes real now. It's not because it depends on what kind of a game, you know, the developers are going to make and what, what their creative vision is or what their art style is going to be. Like, for example, Fortnite, <laughs> Fortnite doesn't look real. And Fortnite uses the Unreal Engine 4, of course. And you know, obviously, owned by Epic, it's going to be using Unreal Engine 5 for whatever future iteration they've got coming up in the next few years, right? So you know they're going to use that too. It's not going to look like that demo. You know, it's going to look stunning in its own way, but it's going to, you know, be cartoony or whatever, or, you know, that kind of thing, animated, Pixar-like, whatever they're going to do with that, right? But what I'm interested in, and I'm interested in that as, as well, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I look at games like Ratchet and Clank and I'm like, wow, that's incredible. It doesn't look entirely realistic, but man, you know, that it, it, it's, it's mind blowing and it's eye candy to me. However, what th there is, there is something to be said about immersion. And the, the thing is when I like to play games that are extremely realistic and, and the, the idea behind that is that it does immerse you into the experience, right? So that it makes it, it you kind of get lost into the situation. Like, for example, I'm playing uh, Last of Us 2 right now on 60 FPS on uh, the PS5, right? Since they put that patch in. And I'm just lost in that game. You know, say whatever you want about the story, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, I like it. I love it, excuse me. And But the thing is, when you're in there, I'm immersed in the situation. Now, when I saw those Unreal Engine uh, 5 demos, what that showed me is... Not what I'm going to get. It showed me the promise of what I can get. It showed me potential of what's going to be coming, right? And I mean, that potential was not just for us as fans and gamers, this and that. That was shown to developers saying, hey, guys, did you ever dream about doing this? Well, now you can. You know, and that's and that gives them the motivation to say, hey, Jim, remember that idea we had like last year or whatever? It's possible now. Let's get some investors in here and let's see if we can pull this off. You know what I mean? So that to me, it shows promise and potential for the future. And that's what I'm excited for. I didn't look at those demos. You know, I wasn't even thinking to myself, oh, man, that Xbox Unreal Engine 5 demo looked better than the PlayStation one or this and that. I just looked at it as potential for both systems, for both companies, as something that everybody could utilize moving forward that I think is going to be beneficial for not only just the developers and the gamers and the companies, just everybody, the entire community. Now, that being said, 
there is there are two companies that I'm keeping my eyes peeled for uh, on the Xbox side of things that I know are going to be utilizing the Unreal Engine 5. And of course, the first one, yeah, okay, In Exile is doing it. I'm interested in In Exile, but they're not really my bag. Ninja Theory yes. has already said that they're going to be uh, utilizing the Unreal Engine 5. Now, there's one thing about that about that uh, that that group there. Okay, they're extremely talented, obviously, but they're also very passionate about what they're doing, and they're very artistically creative. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you look at that game, Project Mara. Like, they did. They, like, what is that? Like, nobody knows what it is. But the thing is, they came up with this wild idea and said, "This whole game is going to take place in one apartment. Let's do this. Um, let's make it hyper realistic. Let's make it scary. Let's make it intense. Let's do this and that." A lot of people don't have the balls to do something like that, but they do because they have these visions. Uh, look at uh, what they did with Hellblade, the first Hellblade, dealing with, um, you know, uh, you know, a, a mental illness and this and that and whatever else. Yes. And that was incredible. And the story that they took you on was incredible. I mean, that takes a very creative mind. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm really excited with it. Now, imagine coupling a creative-minded studio with almost borderline endless money and the tools being Unreal Engine 5 to be able to do that. What they can accomplish with that is practically endless or yes. boundless. So super, it's super, super exciting for sure. Exactly. So like I'm looking at them, but here's the other one. And this one's the dark, uh, the dark horse folks. Okay. Do not forget these guys because they have also confirmed that they are using the Unreal Engine 5. And it is my baby's compulsion games. And Indeed, I'm telling you, sir. Yes. Compulsion games. And I think that's going to drop. I think we're going to get a big blow out of that. That that game is supposed to be, listen to this, yep. uh, Bioshock meets Uncharted. Exactly. Horror. Hello. Yes, please. I know. Like, like sign me up for two, right? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> like the, the, I'm super excited for compulsion games. Now, I remember that. I think it was like a year. Jeez, it's got to be like a year and a half ago when one of the, uh, one of the developers was on uh, Iron Lord's podcast. And she was the one who dropped the ball saying... Uh, drop the bomb, excuse me, not drop the ball. She dropped the bomb there saying, by the way, our game is like a Bioshock meets Uncharted. And then you saw, you see Cognito's face. He was like, what? Like, what is that? That's fantastic. Well, that's been a year and a half. So we got to be hearing something coming up soon. You know what I'm saying? So something's got to be coming up. Now, now, the thing is, like I said, once again, they have confirmed that they will be utilizing Unreal Engine 5. So now you have the money from Microsoft. You have clearly the vision and the talent from the developers. And now you've got the tools being Unreal Engine 5. Like, the, you've got every gun in the arsenal in your hands. How do you miss the target now, right? So th 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 I'm just super excited to see that. So that is what I'm truly waiting for. So when people, like, ask me about E3 coming up, by the way, you know, if we do any, you know, uh, live reaction shows and this and that, I am waiting for what to see if compulsion games brings anything to the table for this e3 and i want to see if any of it is going to be utilized with the unreal engine 5 maybe it's too soon i'm not really 100 percent sure how that all works but i just do know that that's what i'm looking for number one compulsion games number two ninja theory that's what i'm looking forward to now on the sony side of things that's not really the question that was asked of me but you know we could get into all that whatever but you know that sony's gonna bring it okay so you know you got those big studios i'm, I'm not really sure 100 percent which studios are on board but i mean you know you've got these big studios like you've got your insomniacs you got your naughty dogs you got you know you got your sony santa monica's why wouldn't they utilize these Right. So, I mean, and, and on top of it, of making already stunning, cinematic, beautiful games, narrative games, and just elevate it to the next, to, to an even higher level. Right. So, why wouldn't you? So, I just, I, I'm just super excited all around. I'm excited to see what's going to be coming up in the next five to 10 years in this industry, especially uh, running off this engine. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I have, yeah. I, you know, I'm just super excited nonetheless. But anyway, my two picks, like I said, Ninja Theory, Compulsion Games. Yeah, can I and have, great, can pick, I great picks. Uh, you ever born? You know, let, let's grab your opinion on this, and then we'll we'll come to Cyber and Tempest. Wh wh where do you fall on the excitement for Unreal Engine Five being used by many of Microsoft's first-party studios? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, hot take time. <laughs> um, I'm I'm like it's it's great, but to me, Unreal Engine excites me more, except for the Coalition, because I think they're just the masters of Unreal, right? Um, I'm, and I'm super excited for whatever their small project is and, and what they're going to do with that, that tech in, um, 
in gear six. Um, but to me, when I think Unreal Engine, I, I, I think of what it allows smaller teams to do. And I think that you are going to see smaller teams be able to take advantage of Unreal Engine 5 um, and do things that look like what we, we're used to as AAA uh, games. And, and that's exciting because I think you'll, you get a lot more. This is just my opinion, right? I think you get more creative games uh, from the smaller teams that have smaller budgets because they can take those risks. So if you can give me a super creative game that, that, that has the AAA feel because of all the, the, the tools that Unreal provides, awesome. But as far as Microsoft Studios or even Sony Studios, right? I think, look, uh, Halo is gonna be on the slip space engine, right? Uh, Starfield is gonna be in the creation engine, right? Um, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that the other stuff that um, uh, id software is doing is using id tech, right? Sony has the Decima engine. There was a there was a proprietary engine that did that Sony Santa Monica used for God of War. And I didn't know there was a, uh, their own engine that they use that uh, Naughty Dog used for for their stuff. Insomniac has their own engine, right? And maybe the smaller teams will use Unreal Five, but I think a lot of the the sort of like um, big big things that we're gonna see are gonna come from those bes bespoke engines um, that 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 uh, from the first parties. Um, so Un Un Unreal Engine is is kind of like a it's kind of like that that and I don't mean to say master at none, but it is like the jack of all trades. But I'm just saying the things that interest interest me more than Unreal. <laughs> are are the proprietary engines from from the first parties? And now that said, uh, I, and I think I think it 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 only has become a big thing because people were pushing that ridiculous idea that the Lumen in the House of Nanite demo could only be done on the PlayStation Five, which was always ridiculous. But it was a thing that they that people used in the time for for all the 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 the, the Council War stuff. So so to me. Um, Unreal Engine 5 is great, but it's like um, I'm more I'm more interested in uh, what like what the specific teams are doing. I I, I don't care as much about uh, the 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 engine itself, if that makes any sense. Uh, and just one one other thing um, that I just want to touch on something that Chris was saying, like with 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 um, Halo. I don't know why anybody doubts 343 in the graphics department, right? Look at what they did with Halo 4. Look at what they did with Guardians. Look at how they upgraded the, 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 the Master Chief collection. They know what they're doing in that department. Now, if you say your concern is what they're gonna do with the story and how the multiplayer comes out, I have faith in them. But if, that's, if, if, if you have a concern, I think that's where the concern is. Don't worry about the graphics on Halo. I think Halo is going to be fine in, in November. And I expect Halo with the with the slip space engine because we're talking about engines now to wow us just as much as um, um, Horizon did, but in a different way, right? Because it's a different art style, it's a different draw distance. There's different things happening with AI, and I think all those things are are. are I think we're going to have wow moments in two weeks and a lot of wow moments in this holiday when it comes out. Yeah. So. Um, and, and, and lastly, <laughs> uh, the other thing that you said, Chris, I, I have a game for you that they should make, a darker Halo, Halo Nightfall starring Commander Locke. That's what we need. Have it be darker, less colorful, change the play style. I would love to see that. And, and yeah, that's, that's what I got for now. Well, listen, as always, you deliver when you break out, you know, coming from a, from a gamer's perspective, but also from a developer's perspective, because obviously, you know, you are and have created the Everborn Saga. Let, let's get Tempest, son. Tempest, listen, we you know, we spent the first half of the show talking about how Sony delivers with their graphics. I think that Xbox gamers are in for a real treat. I, I think that next generation is going to be extremely different. I think that we're also going to see many of the lifelike graphics that we have been asking for for years to get delivered. And I think Unreal Engine is going to be a big part of that. Are you excited to see what Microsoft can do after that Unreal Engine 5 demo? 
Absolutely. And uh, coming from a guy that, uh, not to sound like a snob, but I just, I you, literally, you this, graphic I, snob. I, well, I literally can't play 30 frames per second games anymore. <laughs> I have no doubt, like Horizon, Ratchet, they're all going to have 60 frames per second modes. But I think I could be out of turn here saying this because I'm I'm not a game developer. But I feel like there's a big difference in a game targeting 60 frames per second from the get go versus adding a mode later. Um, I look at what uh, the coalition was able to do with uh, with Gears and Gears Hive Buster. I mean, that's targeting 60 frames per second and it nails it and I, you know i'm i guess i'm the x-bot here but i think it looks just about every bit as good as what we saw from horizon in this latest thing like hive busters looks freaking phenomenal hive right? busters is by far one of the best products that that has been released for xbox in, in a very long time it it, yeah. it, it it it's absolutely stunning to play and mm -hmm. i'm hoping that we get more of that yeah, well, see that that was a game that from the get go, and I remember when Gears Five was coming out. You know, Rod Ferguson was like, "No, the campaign is going to be sixty frames per second. That was just back on the One X, and and I remember everybody doubted that it would even be possible. That was unheard of for us on console at the time, right? Like nobody was targeting sixty frames per second. Really, I can think of a couple outliers. You know, one of which being maybe like uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid Five or something like that. But you know, for the most part, it was just thirty FPS. Well. It, to me, just listening to Phil Spencer, he numerous times spoke on how games feel. Um, I don't know if there's a mandate, but I'll tell you what, I, I, I almost feel like every, every Xbox game from here on out uh, will probably be made with 60 frames in mind, meaning yes. it's going to be built from the ground up with it. Um, so as long as they, they keep that frame rate buttery smooth, you know, um, I don't know. I, it's I, I hate to just go tit for tat with Sony and Xbox, but um, I just feel like with the Series X, even third party games, uh, first party games, whatever, they're maintaining a higher resolution while hitting these frame rates. I mean, Xbox, uh, they waited. They waited for full RDNA two. They have a it's a beefier box and that stuff can go a long way. And uh, I have, I have no doubt that uh, the developers themselves, you know, from Microsoft studios or Bethesda, which is now Microsoft studios, but uh, you know, I don't think um, uh, they're, they're going to have the chops too. And they're going to have the time. That's probably the biggest thing too. They have so many studios. I don't see any of them being denied time, which is the most valuable resource these developers have to get their game right to put just that much ju juice into the game. I mean, look at Halo. Halo is Halo. Halo is on the Mount Rushmore of, or Master Chief is on the Mount Rushmore of gaming. I, I think almost nobody could Talk deny that. that. Yeah, and they delayed that, and it's going to be an, end up being delayed an entire year. Yeah, but I, a year of polish because the game is yeah. done. So that is pretty. It's going to yeah. look stunning, dude. Do you guys think yeah. Joseph Staten came in and changed anything they were doing with the story? What do you uh, think it was all about polish? Because then that changes a little bit of what they got to do. I mean, they'll have different teams for the narrative. I don't know, dude. I don't think it's, 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 yeah. it's hard to say. I personally don't think he changed much. He he has even made statements very shortly after he got there that he played through the whole game and he was like stunned. He loved it. Um, you know, is that could that just be PR? He could have said nothing either. You know, he could have kept his mouth shut, but instead he was like, no, this was awesome. You know, I played the whole thing twice now. And uh, he's, he's, you know, g given, a, you know, a few beats here and there about uh, uh, how he think it plays. But he brought up some scenarios when it felt different this time fighting, fighting the hunters than before and uh, trying to get people excited that way. I think he probably loved what he saw. Listen, the gameplay, I, don't, I shouldn't go into a Halo topic, but the gameplay was perfect. That Yes. I couldn't have asked for anything better. It's exactly what I wanted. It just needed polish and it got a whole year of polish. So that's going to my point where I think Microsoft's going to, it's, they're going to give these, these teams time um, because there's so many of them when they finally start releasing, it's not going to stop. I, I hope everybody really realizes that like they didn't buy these studios to make one game and then get rid of the studios and start all over again. That's not what's going to happen here. As soon as, 343 is done with Halo, 
you know, they'll probably keep supporting it, but they'll maybe, well, um, Halo is a different thing because a 10 year plan, whatever, but uh, I don't know. So let's say one of the arcane studios, as soon as they release their next game, you know, the Omen game or whatever, they're going to go on to their next game, you know, immediately. And, and and it's going to be an endless cycle of games coming out. And uh, it's an endless cycle of games coming out, but dude, it's like, what, 35 teams, I think? I mean, that's, you know, and more are being added. You'd think they would have stopped, but a, a bunch of the studios already added second teams to their, their roster. So, no, I'm extremely excited. Um, I'm excited on both ends. Like, right right now, I don't see the me personally a reason for me to go out and, and spend the money on a PlayStation 5. I have no doubt eventually Sony's going to come out with something that I absolutely need to have, and when that happens, I'm going to be excited for it. You know, I just... I love good games, and um, we're going to get good games from everybody, uh, you know, even Nintendo. <laughs> so. yeah, no doubt about that. Listen, Cybernox, are you back yet, brother? Yes, sir. I'm here. Let's get your let's get your final opinion. We're gonna yeah. get you know, we're gonna talk about the two big ones that are coming out both in October and December, of course, with Far Cry and Dying Light Two. But w- what are your personal opinions on what was shown with Unreal Engine Five running on the Series X? Does that give you personal confidence that we're gonna see those Sony type games coming to the Xbox Series X? I sure hope so, you know, and um, does it give me confidence? Absolutely. If, uh, boom, you nailed uh, the you hit the nail right of the head with high busters. Jesus, when me and Mag play that, I, I think I mentioned it here on the podcast before. He had to wait for me like every two steps because I was taking a screenshot. The game just looked like absolutely <laughs> amazing and, and vice versa. I, at one point I was with, he's like, hold on a second. I got to take a, a screenshot of this of this Vista right here. Give me one second. I mean, it was absolutely it was absolutely breathtaking that game it was and it was really well done too now with the ul U, ue5 engine what that what that demo did is it kind of gives us you know uh it gives us a glimpse of the potential that these studios what these studios can give us right what these studios can present to us and um like the um coalition is one of those studios i'm like looking forward to exactly to see what they're going to be able to do because man they they nailed it with uh even gears you know gears 4 even gears 5 were already graphical show pieces and whether you like it or not i also think that puts a little bit of pressure on them because they're showing all these you know uh demos these engine demos and things like that and whether you know you like it or not like the graphics is like the first thing people talk about and regardless of any game look at what's going on right now with uh uh, her, uh forbidden west right they're comparing like a character model because you know to sony's own uh, uh success like they're a victim of their own success right they put out these masterpieces and like show pieces that people are, are like picking like at all these details right so the unreal engine 5 just like uh enhances that even more like that that demo man it looked amazing uh the potential that we can get um if you guys remember like i'm actually excited too for um uh, the coalition smaller game you know because they're going to use the smaller games to familiarize themselves with the engine, right? Really work in exactly what they're trying to do and innovate and maybe, you know, try out things like they, you know, that they couldn't have done before. Now they can be, you know, so I'm really excited. Like if you guys remember, I think Rockstar did that, uh, ping pong game i think i yes. mentioned this to you guys before mm-hmm. so they can you know test all the physics and do a, a bunch of different things and then at the end of that generation we got you know a gta 5 which is, which is a game that everybody's still playing today you know so um i'm excited for that and i think uh uh, I think it was Mag that said a compulsion games, man. And they said they're using the Unreal Engine 5 as well. So I, I'm, I'm just, you know, the potential that we can get with uh, this engine and um, what can come of it. I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. It, it, it's a, it's a real treat for us gamers. Yeah. And I cannot wait to see what we are going to be exposed to at E3 only uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, Chris, I, I want to go back to you, brother, because this Thursday and Friday, uh, we basically had a mini E3 because everyone was doing something. And two games that a lot of people have been asking about for what seems like years was, of course, um, 
Holy cow, let me pull up my notes. Sorry about that. Uh, you, you had Dying Light 2. We finally got a confirmation of a December 7th launch. And then, of course, on Friday, we had confirmation from Ubisoft that uh, Far Cry 6 would be releasing on October 7th. These are two monster games. To be honest with you, I don't think that if you start uh, one in October, would you be done with it in potentially December because these games are so big ready for, of course, Dying Light 2, which is going to be another massive game. I mean, they said that game is four times the size of the original, and the original was ridiculously big. For you, as a developer, seeing all of these big announcements in just a mass of, of, of two days, which of the two are you most excited for, Chris? Left uh, Dying Light Two or Far Cry Six? Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I uh, it'll be Dying Light Two for me. I think it looks phenomenal. I think um, you, know, you obviously got that kind of gameplay vibe of um, God. It's it's late here, so I'm trying. Um, <laughs> what what's the game that was? Uh, it was by Dice, wasn't it? Um, Oh, you really talk, really you like Left 4 Dead. Up. Left 4 Dead. Uh, no, I'm talking about that you were kind of the uh, female protagonist and you were kind of doing parkour. Um, oh, um, Mirror's, Edge? Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those with the brain switching off slowly. Yeah, so obviously, I love the fact that you've got all this kind of parkour, you know, Mirror's Edge kind of vibe, but then you've got, um, you know, combat akin to like... Um, you know, condemned criminal origins and stuff, but this big kind of living world and stuff. So I think Dying Light for me is something that, you know, I'm absolutely kind of stoked for. Um, I I enjoy, I've played every Far Cry. I kind of enjoy the the kind of fun factor or the fun element, you know, to those games. So I think they're kind of, you you know, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Always have some some decent kind of gunplay. I think some of the, some of the weapons that they've kind of put into the new game are just, you know, are just crazy. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit of a, bit of a sucker for kind of realism. So I like, you know, kind of real weapons or kind of modded up weapons. But I kind of get the vibe that Far Cry are going for. You know, you've got to scavenge and kind of build these weapons up of uh, parts that are lying around and stuff. So I think two very, you know, two very different games. Yeah, both you know FPSs and so on and so forth. But and both you know huge kind of open worlds um but i think far cry 6 is something you can kind of jump in and out i think a lot of ubisoft games are, are, are that way and i've enjoyed far cry 5 and you know finished that and and the other ones so i kind of ex- enjoyed the kind of exploration element and you could kind of chill and fish and explore a little bit um but i like the kind of edginess and the edgy feel of of, of dying light and obviously dying light 2 is going to be you know more of the same i think the you know build up your skill set the traversal you know deciding to kind of go out at night because um you know some of the kind of the hives or the nests have kind of emptied out as they've come onto the street and then you've got those you've got those kind of uh, more difficult moments where you can get better loot and stuff but obviously there's some you know different types of uh of zombies of of stay back yeah and stuff. a lot of monsters that they showed chris looked like something like right out of left for dead yeah, absolutely. Or the kind of you know, I, I am legend stuff, or you know, yes. it's just a, a mixture of uh, uh, you know of different kind of classics. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I think we're in for you know a great year of games. I think you know, as as gamers who play on you know, different platforms and stuff like that, I think you know we've got uh, such a, a variety. And I mean, my backlog is is insane <laughs> as it is anyway at the minute. So I think we're kind of being you know, spoiled with a lot of you know re- the, the ability to revisit kind of old games you know with uh, you know faster frames per second or you know boosts or auto hdr and stuff as we've said or dedicated patches um and then obviously new games that are coming out so i think this whole narrative of kind of you know there's the whole narrative of xbox got no games and so on and so forth and i think you know to a degree, what people are really saying is, you know, they want more first party. But at the end of the day, it's why they've acquired all these, you know, studios and things yep. to increase that kind of first party catalog. So, in one breath, people are memeing that, you know, it's got no games, and then in the other breath, they're kind of memeing that, you know, 
it's the downfall of gaming because Microsoft <laughs> have acquired loads of studios and stuff. So you can't really uh, you can't really win on that in that regard. But I think both. To go back to your question, both games are good. I think Far Cry Six will be a fun pick up and play. Joe, you know, I'm not sure whether they did they confirm it had co op or anything yes. like that. Yeah, so, they're, they're, yeah. there's okay. actually there's a two player co op for for, uh, for Far Cry Six and four player co op for Dying Light Two. Yeah, so uh, obviously that the, they're the type of things that I always kind of look for in a game. Obviously, I enjoy single player experiences, but you know nothing better than you know, jumping in with some friends and kind of experiencing something, uh, you know, together. See how the story pans out and stuff. So I just think we're in for a treat, and obviously we've got more. You know, Jason Ronald and people were saying there was there was more unannounced games that were out this year. So I think E three is going to be you know, a spectacle, and we're going to. Uh, yeah, we're going to be spoiled for choice, and we're going to spend a lot of money towards the yeah. end of the year. <laughs> Absolutely, not, not if you got Game Pass. Well, no, that's true. That that's definitely <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry. Game Pass is definitely going to save you a couple of bucks. Now, Chris, listen, I know where you are. It's two forty in the morning, so if you if you want to jump out here because obviously you have work tomorrow, by all means, let's we can do your outro, or you can just hang out to the end. Wh- whatever's good for you. No, it's all good. Uh, if I, uh, I'm, I'm someone who sticks around for a podcast. So, uh, excellent, if, excellent. If I get invited okay. on, I'm, I'm here for the duration. So, I, I definitely appreciate. It. Well, we'll definitely keep this to two hours. Uh, Mag, let's, let's get your opinion on this. Yeah. These, these are two heavyweight games. I'm happy to say that they're not going toe to toe. Two months apart gives me a chance to enjoy one and then put it down and then start something else and enjoy it. Out of the two, which impressed you the more? Which is the one that's going to grab you first? But that this is an unfair question, Boom. Okay, because <laughs> because they're both tied for first place for most anticipated games of this fall. Um, on top of uh, Battlefield Six. So if I were to pick my trifecta, I would say Far Cry. Now that it's confirmed that they're coming out in 2021, um, I'm I gotta like what am I supposed to say? I mean, I got Battlefield Six, you got Far Cry Six, <laughs> and then you've got Dying Light Two, and of course you've got uh, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, Horizon uh, Forbidden West. So I mean, I I want them all. And the thing is, what I'm thinking, and I know Chris said that, you know, we, we could be spending a lot of money this fall. I beg to differ because I have a feeling that those rumored big AAA games that are coming to Game Pass in the fall will be at least two of those games. And I think it's going to be Battlefield 6 and Dying Light 2 will be coming to Ooh, Xbox Game Pass. Interesting. And now, the thing is, Battlefield 6, we already know wh- we already know the possibility as to why. Now, the other thing is, is that Dying Light 2, if I'm not mistaken, Microsoft did invest quite a hefty amount of money into the development to get it moving along. Did they not? About a year ago. I, I, they, they might, they might have helped them a bit. Yeah, they did, and I remember it. We talked about it. I think it was like last September or August, somewhere around there. And they had actually invested into, they invested money into the the game because the game was kind of stalling. It was kind of almost going into development hell, so to speak, for a little while. Remember that they announced it like two years ago, almost three yeah, years ago, whatever it was. Techland, wasn't it? I think, yeah, I yeah, think with Techland, right. yeah, yeah, and it disappeared. And then yeah, we there was a like, rumor that Microsoft was going to buy them too. I remember that was a thing that went. There was a for rumor. A while. There was a rumor of that, but Microsoft did end up investing money into the development of the game. Why would they do that unless they had every intention of speeding up the process of getting this game out so they could get it out in Game Pass within the first year of the launch of the series consoles? It's funny that, that you say that because some mm-hmm. of the biggest rumors that have come out of uh, that we're going to be very surprised by the third party game that's coming into Game Pass this fall. I think you're onto something here, dude. That's what I'm thinking it is. I mean, and like, why would they invest the money into getting the uh, moving the game along with Techland? Like, there's there, there's no other motivation. I mean, the motivation is okay. Sure, get the game out, and I'm sure that, and of course, they they have the marketing rights. Do they not? Yes. I believe, I believe they do for, for okay. both, I think. Okay, so they got the marketing rights. They're not going to invest entirely into the game just for the marketing rights. They're they're investing into the game so that they could get that game at the Game Pass day one. And I think that that's one of the games. And it might just be the Jason Ronald game that he was talking about where he was saying uh, the game that uh, – or no, 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 sorry. He said it was a game that was not announced. So scratch that. Never mind. Scratch that, uh, that <laughs> theory. But anyways, the point is I'm not sure which game I'm going to be more excited for. Because I I'm, I love them both. I have you boom. You know me. 
Okay, I complete games to 100%. I platinum everything. I, well, except for Resident Evil Village, that goddamn mercenaries mode. But besides that, uh, everything else, I get to 100%, right? I've been, I've been 100%ing Far Cry since Far Cry 2. Dude, okay? I've been getting 1,000 out of 1,000 for years on that. I love that franchise. I adore dude. those games. I, I literally explore every single square inch of those maps i get it everything obviously i do 100 percent of everything on every single one of those games uh the last one i did obviously far cry 5 played with my wife we put in 150 or 160 hours into that game and we played co-op wow and uh yep and we we thousand it okay both of us and i mean that game is phenomenal so yeah far cry 6 and of course how can you forget we got john carlo esposito as the bad guy i mean does it get any better than that the moth himself from Mandalorian, you know what I mean? And of course, from Breaking Bad. I mean, my God, that guy's so electric. Every time he speaks, like he just chews scenery, you know what I mean? Like it's just the way he speaks, the way he talks, the menace in his voice and in his eyes and everything else. I mean, you can't get a better villain than that. So, you know, it's going to be phenomenal. And like Chris said, it's going to be a good drop in, drop out kind of game. And the funny thing is, actually, when they showed the game just a few days ago, my DMs have been lighting up. I literally have a waiting list already started as to how many people want to play co-op with me in Far Cry 6. Nice. So, like, Cyber, you want to get in there. You're, like, number seven on the list now, dude. So Hot if you want seven, to be in the baby. top ten, seven. come on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, see, I, I'm not even kidding. I've had people say, <laughs> we're, we're, we're co-oping this. We're co-oping this. We're co-oping this. We're co I'm like, all right, guys, relax, relax. When the game comes out, we'll do it one day at a time. So I'm really <laughs> excited for that. Uh, what I didn't realize until you mentioned it, Boom, is actually that Dying Light. Now let's get to Dying Light 2. I absolutely adored Dying Light. And I saw it. See, I didn't, I didn't really give it the time of day because I, I, I enjoyed when it first came out. Um, what was it called? Uh, Dead Island? Was it Dead Island? Is that, that well, the one? Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I wasn't a huge fan of the melee combat first person kind of thing because to me it came across kind of clunky. Right. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous. Like you're swinging a bloody tennis racket, like at a, you know, at a zombie and whatever. Right. So I'm like, all right, this is kind of silly. And I didn't like it, you know, but then Dying Light came out and then people started talking about it. And, this, and then I looked at it and I thought I saw it on sale. It was like 20 bucks or $25 for the game of the year edition with that. Um, what is it called? The following. It had the DLC packed into it and everything. So I'm like, yeah. you know what? I'm diving in. Let's do it. I'm a zombie nut. You know, that's my jam. I love zombie games, zombie movies, whatever. So I get in there and I start playing this game and I'm like, this is what I was waiting for because it had, you know, the mirror's edge parkour, which made the game thrilling. You know, you could get through that this open world, go through all these places, jump through buildings, jump through this and that alleyways, ducking over here, jumping over there, sliding on poles. It was remarkable. And on top of that, you're dicing, slicing, decapitating, you know, um, quartering delimbing zombies i mean this is phenomenal the gore was great the story was i really enjoyed the story and um i love the game i absolutely adore the game now, the fact that you mentioned that it's now for uh, that it's four player co-op i'm wondering if that's for the campaign or if that's going to be one of those little side you know how like dying light had like that four player like like battle royale mode and kind of stuff yeah. or is yeah, it going yeah. to be the campaign that's what I'm curious to see. I mean, it doesn't matter to me either way because I'll jump in with other people. And, you know, you know me, I really enjoy my single player experiences because, you know, it takes me away from the real world for just a little while. Right. So I really enjoy that. So, yeah, I'm super excited for that. Now, the only trepidation I have with Dying Light 2. And again, once, you know, uh, once again, you guys know I'm a completionist when, when I play games is that. They did say that from a narrative point of view, that if you, you know, join or help a certain faction, it actually changes the narrative of the story. Yes. And then it goes off into these different. So now I actually had a moment of panic going, oh, my God, if I make a decision, is that going to block me from five achievements? Because then, you know, it'll, you know, five achievements will be related to another faction. And I'm like, oh, no, I gonna have to go back and play it again. I don't want to do that. I like to play open world games and just tear the entire open world apart. You know, and uh, I don't want to go back and have to replay the story over and over and then choose different factions each time. That will kind of piss me off a little bit. But you know what? If the game is phenomenal, you know, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go kicking and screaming. But, you know, I'm going to do it uh, because I absolutely adore the first game. And I know that this game is going to be, be even better. So anyways, uh, I can't pick one or the other. I'm just going to say I'm super excited for both. Nice, strong, strong opinion. Uh, let's let's get uh, Cyber Knox. Cyber, you back, brother? 
Yes, sir. I'm okay, here. let's get your opinion. Of the two, I mean, now obviously, we, we, we as gamers, we were treated to an incredible end of the week. Uh, mm-hmm. We got a lot of a lot of uh, uh, you know stuff shown. Lot lot of lot of gameplay. These two games showed off great, and obviously, they're both big open world. Which of the two are your pick for, or are both games your pick for this fall? Oh man, I think you guys know because I, I, as soon as I saw it, I went to the DMs and I hit you guys up and I said, "Holy Far Cry, man, that's number one for me. That that's a little bit above uh, Dying Light." And now I do love Dying Light. Uh, I I played the and first who could one. say no to Ch- Chorizo? Oh, exactly. I mean, come on, <laughs> exactly. Come on, man. Uh, nah, the atmosphere in there, the charisma that that whole trailer oh, uh, of the of the characters in there, it was amazing. Like we had a crocodile, the crocodile, the dog at the end. Like the whole that whole world just seemed like uh, uh, an amazing open open uh, open sandbox that you're gonna have so much fun with. It, it's incredible, and the way they uh, they introduced certain things, right? They were, the, the way they were telling, hey, maybe you should, you know, be be more stealthy here maybe you should approach this you have your you know these different type of event oh amazing now the last time the last far uh cry game i played was four i didn't play five um um i i just uh i completely like that missed that game um but i actually that's also a game that i had that i didn't play but um that's not either here or there but far cry six looks just phenomenal to me like after i saw that trailer i said yes this right here day one i'm about it and if mag has you know from his lips to god ears uh if it comes to game pass day one oh my god that'd be even more amazing you know i know he was talking about uh maybe dying light being one of them but potentially they also what we do know is that uh Whenever Microsoft has a marketing deal with some of these games, it, it can come to Game Pass later in the future. But that's a day one for me, for sure. That game looked incredible. I think uh, the story is going to hit and that that gameplay just like just like way too much fun for me to pass on. Yeah, I mean, listen. I think I think both of them are going to offer a lot of uh, of long time play. These are both games that you can easily sink 40, 50, 60, 100 hours into, oh, 100%. and it, it, it's going to be definitely worth the while. And certainly, if one or two of them get into Xbox Game Pass, well, then you know, again, I'm still waiting for that Ubisoft Plus announcement at E3. And I think if it is, and wow, it turns out to be oh, that yeah. Far Cry is in there day and date. That's going to be something. Uh, to really get excited about for sure if you don't have to straight up pay for it and you just you know enjoy it and 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 play through game pass but uh before we get to everborn saga let, let's get let's 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 bring um our good friend tempest sun into the conversation tempest you love these big open world games and we're getting two of them back to back almost i mean there is a two month gap thank god for that because if they released at the same time one of them is getting shelved because it's their games are too big for you of the two which ones are you most excited about Dying Light seemed super ambitious, and we've only had one Dying Light, and uh, I enjoyed the first one. Um, so technically, I should be more looking forward to that because we've had five Far Cries. Uh, but I'm more f- excited for Far Cry, Far Cry Six. Uh, That's my that, boy. Yeah, That's it my just boy. it excited me <laughs> so much. They they hit all the right beats. Um, I I really enjoy this the setting, uh, the creativity that they're going to allow you to have. Uh, I don't think Far Cry gets quite enough credit, but their their skill tree and uh, some of the customization stuff is pretty cool. Uh, you wouldn't even really think about it by looking at the game, but it is. This looks like you're going to be able to go one step further with the backpacks and all that stuff. Um, the Esposito, I know the last part of his name. <laughs> Giancarlo. Uh, Giancarlo. Yeah, Giancarlo. Thank you. Thank you. Phenomenal. Phenomenal actor. The only thing this game can do wrong by having him in it is there won't be enough of him. Guaranteed. There's not <laughs> going to be enough of him. So he's phenomenal. And thank you. Thank you, Ubisoft. I loved five, but for the life of me, just because they allowed you to pick a gender, for the life of me, I don't know why they made your character silent can't stand that i hate that i hate that almost as much as 30 frames per second i can't stand it and it's the fixed only in this video one. game character that should be silent is link 
Yeah. And he's not even silent. You at least get hey hi ya yeah, out of the guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't stand silent characters. And thankfully, you can be male, female, they're both voiced, and that'll at least give us the chance to know if we even like the character, right? So um I, I'm glad they fixed that. Um the freaking puppy with the wheels. <laughs> yeah, Chorizo. He looks yeah. awesome, too. And the other, yeah, so that's the what other thing. What about the too. weapons, man? The crazy oh, yeah, the weapons. weapons. They look fantastic. It looks like the game has uh, a healthy dose of like Everybody recoil, loves the Macarena, gunplay. Right? Yeah, no, hold, hold on, yards. It looks really good. It looks really, really good. Um, I'm excited for it. I, I really enjoyed uh, Far Cry 5. And you know what? I'm, I'm glad, you know, three and four were zany and out of control and stuff, but. They were just a little bit more set in reality. Um, I, I like the fact that they're not taking themselves so seriously, and they're just allowing you to have fun with it. I, I enjoy that. Not every game has to be a gut wrenching, you know, tall tale of whatever's going on. So uh, I like it. I I really love the way it looks. Uh, the others were fun. This just looks like m more of the same and uh, awesome. And thankfully. I know this for a fact. They're targeting 60 frames a second. <laughs> so just, um, I don't know. Has anybody actually, this is a question for the panel. Has anybody taken a look at Far Cry 5 and New Dawn? I think it was New Dawn. Maybe not. Something Dawn. The, uh, the expansion they came out with where it was like after the nukes went off. Um, did anybody play those games after oh, it yes. got the uh, FPS no. boost? No. no okay. I didn't play it either. Do me a favor. Um Try that. It hits different way more than you think it will. It's something about the first person view in an open setting like that. Go anywhere, open world. There's something about that game in particular. When I tried it, it just it really hit different for me. And I, I felt it more than any of the other games that I tried uh, with the F FPS boost. Um, it, it's, it felt special. And uh, so I'm hyped. It, it sold me instantly that when i watched it i was like i need this right now so that that's that's my winner okay that's, that's uh, certainly, certainly not wrong anybody want to jump in sorry uh, i just have something quick to say uh, boom i'm not going to say much here uh i just looked it up and it turns out that actually the there was um a press release last fall by the developer by techland and they actually say this as the game has been in development hell for a long time but the game is really close to being done the big thing is that it's good uh, sorry microsoft helped fund the game and it's expected to launch within the year okay so well, it is confirmed go. that they did actually help uh fund the game to get it out of development hell and get the game moving so i just wanted to clarify you know what could, could this be one of those announcements that they announced live live during their event that this is a console exclusive or a timed exclusive because well, they paid acg did say uh last september that it said it was rumored to be a timed exclusive to xbox um but i mean you know if it's going to be timed exclusive you know what that means game pass yeah. Right. So it's pretty much obvious. Now that's ACG. I mean, if you know, but but it was he also did hint that it was uh, that they were looking into acquisition, but that obviously did not happen. I think it was February of this year, February 2021, that uh, Techland actually had said that they are not being bought out by Microsoft. However, they did confirm that Microsoft did fund the game in order to get the development moving again. So they obviously has a motivation there. So I, I just wanted to confirm what I had said, just so I wasn't you know talking no, out no. of the side of my mouth so <laughs> no, absolutely no no i definitely appreciate that Let, let's get um everborn's uh final opinion on this everborn when you seen both of these games i mean thursday and friday were madness um and I, we got, all got a chance to see these games running they all had uh vertical slices of the game which of the two had you most excited which of the two has me most excited? We're talking about Thursday, Friday. I'm going to tell you what had me most excited. Sonic Colors, right? We're forgetting about the, the, the Sonic day that we had. No, but <laughs> seriously, uh, although I actually am going to play Sonic Colors. Um, but I would, I, would go with, I would go with Dying Light 2. I'm very interested. I never played the first one, but it was something I'm all, I've always been interested in. I, I like that sort of mirror's edge mixed with zombies and things like that but i wonder how close do we think this gameplay style is to what they want to do with um um the the initiatives game um um what's it called perfect dark right because there's a lot of 
they say there's going to be a lot of parkour elements in that, and that's a first person thing. But um, to me, I've never really been into Far Cry like that. So, uh, but Dying Light has always interested me. So, and I'm 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 a sucker for zombies. Also, just watch uh, Zack Snyder's um, Army of the Dead. I, I, we'll talk about that one on Thursday. But uh, yeah, for me. Not a lot to say here, but uh, Dying Light Day One for me, whether it's in Game Pass or not. Okay, I mean, it, listen, every game is not for every gamer, but it seems that one is definitely for you. And listen, what what can I say? I I mean, for me. I think that we're going to get a lot of surprises uh, come this E3. I think Microsoft is not only going to surprise us with what we were, you know, what to expect with Halo. I think we're going to get um, Forza Horizon 5. I think we're going to get a lot of third-party support in Xbox Game Pass. I mean, basically, like I've said this before, and I'll say it again, they are pulling a Sony. Uh, when Sony didn't have a lot of their first party games ready, they relied heavily not only on um, the indie community, but of course, third party marketing uh, and those exclusives in the second party realm. I think we're going to see a lot of that. Boom. Can I can I add some, that's I do have something to say about E3. Right? Sure. I think E3 is going to knock our socks off. And this is not because of rumors and this and that. I'm just saying just from what we know. This is a show where we're going to get Starfield. We're going to see what it is. We're going to get in-depth Halo, right, with release dates. We're going to get dates on the games that they've already announced were coming this year, and then surprises, right? Randall Thor and uh, Jez were talking about Project Omen, right? We, 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 maybe this uh, Battlefield thing we see. There's so much happening to me just from what we know. Even thinking conservatively, this is going to be a monster, monster E3. I don't want to hear anything about uh, temper expectations or anything just from Halo and Starfield alone uh, are, 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 are huge. And then we're going to get other stuff from the other from the first party stuff. So I don't even think they are relying as uh, they are relying on third party, but there's so much from first party. Right. So I, I think I think we're. I, I, if I if you have a slot, I'd like to be on the uh, reaction show. Oh no, yeah, you're you're already on there, brother. Okay, you're, all right, yeah, good, you you, you and Kay Asante already got I, spots. Yeah, I I was gonna crash the show if I wasn't. No, no, you you you're, you're always <laughs> welcome. But listen. Let's uh, let, let me, first of all, let me thank everybody. We had uh, over almost 300 people here today. Uh, and again, like going up against Colt and his incredible show, it, it's it's tough business, folks. And I want to thank everybody who took the time to support uh, this show that's been going for a while. Uh, we made, uh, we'll be, I think this September makes two years that we're doing this show. Of course, I want to thank uh, the incredible support. Uh, from you guys and gals. Uh, obviously, we do, if we don't have your support, when we don't have a show at all, and of course, I have to thank the panel and our very special guest, Chris. First of all, brother, thank you so much for hanging out with us for two hours. I know it's super, super late by you. Uh, I, 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 dude, I, I can't thank you enough for your insight, your uh, your patience, uh, hanging out for the full two hours. Tell everyone where they could reach out to you on social media, potentially to strike up a conversation. And what else you got going on? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Obviously, um, <clears throat> yeah, I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed the knowledge of uh, of yourself and the panel. Um, obviously, I'd love to come on again at some point in the future. So, um, as late as it is, it's been uh, it's been really enjoyable. So, thanks again. Um, yeah, I mean, you can find me on Twitter, CJ Grinnell. Um, obviously, have a conversation with me about anything. Uh, I tend to uh, I tend to enjoy talking all things kind of games and whatnot try to keep it as as real as possible <laughs> and not get pulled into too many kind of uh you know fan wars and stuff like that <laughs> um hard times uk on on xbox and and playstation obviously playing more on the xbox side of things um i've not got my ps5 yet uh, I, wow. I did have a pre-order for it but <laughs> i gave it up to someone who desperately wanted a, a ps5 at the time so you know, sometimes you've got to you've got to help your fellow uh, fellow gamers out and stuff. And there wasn't <laughs> anything which I wanted to kind of jump on. I've still got my PS4 Pro and stuff for for some of those kind of uh, launch titles that we can play. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely be picking one up uh, in the next few weeks if I can get hold of one. I've got a few uh, fingers and pies trying to trying to find stuff for me. So uh, hopefully get back on that. And yeah, I'm with uh, Wandering Dutch and, and and crew on a on a Wednesday, the midweek. Uh, mix-up podcast so 
part of the panel there now, so people can can obviously come and see us week in, week out, talking about all things uh, gaming. Um, so yeah, just uh, as I say, give me a shout. Uh, so if, if anyone wants to chat or anyone wants to play any games, add me to uh, to Xbox and whatnot. And as I say, uh, you know, pleasure coming on the show again. Really appreciate you having me. Oh, we're definitely going to get you back after E3 so we could break down everything that happened. Chris, once again, brother, thank you so much. Great talking with you and uh, look forward for you making a return uh, in in the coming weeks. Like I said, as soon as uh, E3 is uh, done and everyone has uh, getting ready for the fall, we'll get you back on for sure. Middle-aged gamer guy, besides you potentially making everyone throw up in their mouth <laughs> with with, uh, with your hot tub shenanigans. Where can people reach out to you, brother? And what else you got going on? Well, first of all, I don't know who's throwing up because that uh, that Twitch stream is happening, okay? So uh, <laughs> uh, that's happening. That's going to be a full-time gig. But anyways, in all seriousness, guys, yes, it was a great show tonight. Chris, it was wonderful to have you on here. I've listened to you before, and it was a pleasure to actually be on a show with you. So it was great to, great to have you on. So uh, anyways, guys, Thanks, you can reach out. To, you can reach out to me on Twitter at the Middle Age Game Guy. That's with a G Y at the end, and on the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X, you can find me at all one word, all capitals, because I don't know how to be quiet. I am the Mag, so you can find me in all those places. Yes, every Monday evening, you can find me right here, eight PM Eastern Standard Time on Primetime Gaming with Mister Boomstick XL and friends. And of course, you can find me tomorrow night, ten PM Eastern Standard Time on Gaming After Dark with none other than Noof Nukem and the legendary Titan Drago. And uh, guys, once again, great show. Already looking forward to next week. E3 is coming. Things are heating up. I'm getting excited. Y'all should be getting excited too because this is our Super Bowl time. This is our World Series. This is our Champions League. This is our World Cup. It's all happening (laughs) this month. So guys, get hyped. We'll see you all next week. Oh, thanks so much for being here, brother. And Cyber Knox, let's get you on out of here, dude. Tell everyone about your outstanding YouTube channel. Where could people check, uh, uh, reach out to you on social media? But more importantly, tell people about the Xbox Game Pass Club. I appreciate that, boom, Chris. Man, it was an absolute pleasure. Like everyone that's mentioned here, I've heard you multiple times in other podcasts, and just talking to you and listening to your insight, man, it's been great. Um, it was awesome, man. Uh, at Cybernox on Twitter, guys, and Xbox Live, pretty much anywhere gaming Cybernox, and uh, you can you know follow me on Twitter, talk to me there, uh, send me you know any kind of questions or or anything that you guys want to talk about on xbox i'm always on as night wolf met and mentioned here on the chat um yeah just hit me up anytime you want a game i'm i'm always down to play some multiplayer i love that and uh yeah xbox game pass club is you know a channel that i, I started is like a, a book club or for xbox games where we can you know as a community you know we pick random games we play different genres we we pick games at random just so we can you know diversify our gaming portfolio try new genres see if we can actually use that discovery mechanism that uh xbox game pass is meant for and maybe you know discover some new new games that we hadn't you know potentially had seen before and played or or have even been interested in you know so xbox game pass club Cybernox on Twitter and everywhere else. And I can't wait to, you know, be here next Monday talking games with you guys again. Yeah, well, thanks so much for being here. Uh, Tempest Sun, brother, why don't we get you out of here? Tell everyone about about your YouTube channel where you're going to be putting some uh, Gundam models together and obviously doing it in a way that is uh, going to be professional. I've seen some of the work. It looks really impressive. Those uh, those models are tremendous, dude. <laughs> and uh, they seem like they have uh, the patience you have for that is just bananas. And also, where could pe- people reach out to you on social media and potentially strike up a conversation? Thank you, Boom. Appreciate it, buddy. And um, yeah, you can find me uh, on Twitter at the Tempest Sun. My gamer tag is Tempest Sun. Uh, I do the models. I still game though, and uh, I'm work- working my way through Mass Effect. I've been absolutely loving it. So yeah. um, that's an amazing remaster. So every time I, I'm like, you know what? I've had enough of the model for now. <laughs> I'll go and I'll rock out on Mass Effect. Um, but yeah, I should be having a video out tomorrow at the latest Wednesday, and I'll post it up on Twitter and everything. And yeah, please come by, take a look. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. So um, it's fun stuff. So uh, it, was, it was a pleasure being here. Chris, nice meeting you, man. You know, just like 1080p, listening to you has made me a better gamer. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. Excellent. Ending. 
So uh, I will uh, I will see everybody later, and uh, it's been fun. Can't wait till next week. Yeah, brother, Def- can't wait to be, uh, be talking. Uh, we'll, uh, next week will be will be a week away from E three, six days more specifically. And last and no way least, Everborn Saga. Why don't you tell us about your incredible uh, journey uh, through the Everborn Saga, and where could people reach out to you on social media, and more importantly, what other podcasts are you on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Everborn Saga everywhere. That is Everborn Saga on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Xbox, Steam, PlayStation, you name it. But most importantly, EvermornSaga.com, where you can go and get yourself some of these books that you see right here. We have an interconnected uh, series of manga, West manga inspired western comics uh it's four series following different characters all in the same story it's like the mcu but but anime right um fantasy anime uh and on thursday this thursday at 8 p.m you can catch me and the brother k asante we we, that is when we do our movie talk show where we sort of talk about what's going on in movies what we think we're going to be talking about zack snyder's um, Army of the Dead and some of the Sony executives talking about how they are going to connect their world with the MCU. So that'll be a very interesting conversation. And then Saturday, every Saturday, 10 a.m., me and Kay Asante do the Game Circle podcast on his channel, uh, where we just kind of do what we do here. We talk about games, gaming, the industry, and what we think about it technology, all that stuff. So uh, check us out on my channel, Everborn Saga on YouTube also on Thursday at 8 and check check us out on Kay Asante's channel Saturday at 10 uh, and go to EvermornSaga.com so you can get some of these. So thanks everybody and thanks Chris. Well, thank you, for, brother, for being here. And, of course, I want to thank everyone once again for being here. Uh, and, uh, Chris, uh, have a fantastic night, brother. Cannot wait to get you back on. I think you're going to enjoy E3. You probably know some secrets uh, because, obviously, you're a part of the industry. Uh, but, obviously, cannot wait to hear your opinion on everything that was shown off by, by Microsoft, by Sony, and what's expected from Nintendo. Of course, I'm going to close out today's show with something. That's important to me. Hopefully one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he said, son, treat others how you want to be treated. And also it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next week on the newest episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. (laughs) 